stage a lot. That's okay. I can, we will call the regular meeting of the Cedar Springs City Council to order for Thursday, July 13th at 2023, 7.03 p.m. And I would <clears throat> invite you all to rise and say the pledge with me. I pledge allegiance to the Mr. Roll call, Ms. Atchison. Here. Mr. Gross. Here. Ms. Hamill. Uh, present. Ms. Nixon. Ms. Powell. Here. Ms. Race. Here. And Mayor Conley is here. At this time, I would take a motion <clears throat> to excuse Councillor Nixon. I'll make that motion. Or all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Molly, when you get this, we hope you're doing okay and we hope you get here. And then we are going to give the oath of office to Greg Seeley. Are you are you Sergeant Seeley? What is your our firefighter <laughs> emergency medical? Oh Lute- are you lieutenant chief? Is that the you're just a firefighter. Full time. I wouldn't want to do that job. Yeah, so. you're just the person that runs into the the buildings. The rest of us, yeah. are, as I always say, the people who run into the buildings that the rest of us run out of. Wonderful. So, Madam Clerk, <laughs> don't be shy. I, Greg Seeley, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Michigan, the City Charter and Code of Ordinances of the City of Cedar Springs, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of firefighter slash emergency medical responder to the best of my ability. Yay! Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is a this is a very big deal. The, yeah. You are our first full time firefighter for the city of Cedar Springs, and it's a critical service. I mean, it's critical. So thank you, and you've been serving the city for eighteen years. when uh, Mr. Rose hired me. Nice. Well done. Yeah. So, yeah. long time. I did a few good things. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> bravo. Bravo, bravo. Public comments. At this time, the council welcomes and encourages the public to speak during the public comment and public hearing portion of the agenda. However, council policy is to hear the public comment not to act on the public comment at this time. Concerns brought before the council during the public comment portion of the agenda will be referred to the city manager for action. If after communicating with the city manager, no resolution is reached, the concern will be elevated to the mayor and then eventually to the council for action. Those citizens wishing to speak on agenda and and or non-agenda items will be allowed a maximum of four minutes each to address their concerns. This is the only time during the council meeting that citizens are allowed to address the council. Please state your name and address for the record if you would like a written response. At this time, anyone who would wish to speak? Uh, Quick question though, well, I've I've got, I'm on the agenda as Skinner Field. So do you wanna wait? Will will I be allowed to speak during that? Oh yeah, of course, of course. Well then, yeah. agenda items get agenda items. Okay, I just want to make then. No, I don't have any. <laughs> hey, anyone else? You can talk about anything you want. Um, unless you are actually from the Solon Library. Solon Township. Township Library. You can speak now. You can speak now for public comment. Mr. Kiphart is is the director, the something of the Friends of Skinner Field. The, he's the something. Good Molly. Please, please let the record show that at 707, 
Ms. Nixon has arrived. Breathe, I got you. Okay. I'm Mary Coonan and I live at 1275 18 Mile Road in Cedar Springs. I'm a Solon Township resident. And I'm just concerned about the possibility of Solon Township losing library services. And I've spoken with a few other township residents and they don't know, and I didn't know, don't know really how much we even pay for those services. And I'm here to answer. And okay. hopefully we'll continue having services. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's not written on it. Yeah, it's not a um it's not a dedicated millage. That's I mean, that's what I got for you. Not a dedicated millage. We have a dedicated millage. It's if you're a citizen of Cedar Springs, you have a dedicated millage on your tax for the library. And then we also as a council have chosen to make a budget item. We can answer that question yeah. when we talk about it. Right. I'm just saying in general, yeah, just no, as an I'm understanding. Okay, hey, anyone else? Mm -hmm. We'll address that, ma'am. There's a, just a couple things on here that don't have anything to do with the, the topic, uh, just standard update things. So Sean Kippart, uh, Friends of Skinnerfield, 90 Cedar Street. Um, uh, just give you an update that the, the rest of the semi-pro games um, have been scheduled. Um, all of the dates have been given to the city manager, the clerk, the fire department, and uh, the sheriff's department. So they, they have all the dates and they're, doing what they decide they is best um other than that the last time we spoke i had submitted the reinstatement packet of the uh and the reports that i did not file um and they've been received approved and we're back in good standing with the state as a nonprofit. so um i take full responsibility for that and it has been corrected so that's that's the update okay thank you thank you anyone else Public comment. Just want to quickly address just a couple of things. Sure. Um, so I'm not certain um, what will be talked about as far as the Skinner Field thing, but I just wanted to share my experience with Skinner Field. And um, so I have two boys that have come up uh, in youth football and participated in that at Skinner Field. Both of my kids have learning disabilities that significantly impact the way that they feel about school. Um, and one of the things that has dragged them through school and provided a very positive experience has been playing youth football. Um, and um, one of the things that I really appreciate about Skinner Field um, is that it is unique um, within the world of rocket football. Um, mm -hmm. And um, oftentimes, um, because I'm closely involved with the teams that my kids have been playing on. Um, I hear from other coaches and things of that nature about how impressed <clears> they <throat> are with Skinner Field and the fact that this community, a community this size, has a dedicated space for these kids. Um, and I know that Skinner Field serves many other purposes as well, um, but um, I just want to speak to how impactful it has been in the life of my family. Um, and I really appreciate it. And I respect that um, you all um, have a job to do to um, keep things in line and all of that. And so if that's helpful to your discussion, I hope that it will be. Um, and then um, just lastly, very, very quickly, um, I just, uh, I also know that you'll be talking some about the library services agreement. Um, and um, as a citizen of Cedar Springs, I appreciate the way that you have been negotiating this process um, and um, support uh, your continued work with that. So thank you so much for doing so. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rebecca. Did you want to share your name or no? Oh, sorry, Tim Smith. Thank you. Fine. That's okay. You don't have to. It's just if you'd like to. And do you do you wish to share a title or no? Okay. That's fine. I think you, did, you don't have to. You did the rest of the title. It's called Father. Yeah. That's an important one, too. Mm -hmm. That's right. But he also has one involved with the library. Anyone else? Can I take just a moment? 
You sure can. We don't, I don't start the timer until you start talking. And if it's helpful for you, you may speak from there. You can, you absolutely can. And, you can, and I was going to say, you can even do it sitting. If it's, if it's helpful. We absolutely want to accommodate. I'm going to meet you halfway. I, 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 yeah, okay, well, you can sit down if you want. Or how about I hold it? Anyway, I'm, I am I really didn't plan to take time tonight, but I wanted to thank the council for the support of the museum. Our museum, as you know, has been rated as one of the best small town museums in Michigan, at least. We think in the whole United States. But anyway, it was, uh, we've had a lot of, uh, Damage down there. The wind has nothing to do with. But I want to make that you know that your people keep the yard clean of branches, big branches, trees falling on the building. And they, they take care of it, and it makes it really look nice. And we appreciate that. And I I know the people of the community appreciate that also. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you to our DPW people for making us look good. <laughs> Did you want to share your name? Fred. Fred. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Fred. And yes, we have a wonderful museum. Phenomenal. Thank you for coming and talking to us. Anyone else? Other public comment? Is there anyone on Zoom, Madam Clerk? There are a handful of people on Zoom. If they'd like to make a public comment, if they'd like to raise a hand or unmute themselves, now would be the time. Seeing no public comments. All right, moving on. Public hearing. A 425 request for 14300 White Creek Avenue, Cedar Springs, Michigan, 49319, 41-02-25, 300-046 is the site from Solon Township to the city of Cedar Springs. And then a, so we need to, do I need to open a public hearing? You can declare that it's open. Okay. I'm declaring the public hearing open. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this on the public hearing? I know that the planning commission heard this the other night and I'm told that um it was a well done presentation and <laughs> sure we're actually gonna we're gonna talk about it um I think yeah <laughs> sure that'd be lovely for our public hearing please Mr. McIntyre you might know something about it you might know a little something about it I'm Dwayne McIntyre been around here a couple of years um but anyways, uh, this 425 is part of the process that my dad started, and maybe Fred had some too, and yeah, quite a few people around. Um, it's a tax revenue sharing with uh, Solon Township in the city. The property will be transferred into the city um, upon this agreement, and Solon still gets a couple mills or something like that as far as tax revenue. They're basically held harmless, I believe, is yeah. the process. Yeah, yeah. So this is, again, just a step to be able to get city services, water and sewer. And uh, um, for this uh, project, this project is a 168 apartment complex uh, or 168 unit apartment complex. And this is uh, really nice apartments. These are done with very nice finishes on the exterior, on the interior. They have granite, very nice stuff done they have garages and uh they're accessible yeah they have that was a huge accessible on the main floor and uh they've had to change the plan this was approved a year ago and by the planning commission and now it's just got reapproved last tuesday but now it's a three-story building um it's less footprint on the property eagle determine some wetlands, which I won't go into because it just makes me mad, but uh, um, they they changed some some of the, the property usage, so they, they had a little less to do, so they had to go a little taller, but very, very nice looking buildings, and uh, these folks did the 
the units behind Meyer on 10 Mile, and they're local. And I see Doug. Hi, Doug. Yeah. On Zoom there, and uh, he's the developer, and uh, they're out of Jenison, so it's it's good to work with local people. That answers your question. Any questions for the hearing for the public hearing? You have a question. You look like you have a question. Progress. You. Progress is getting through all these steps. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they hope to build them in three to five years. At uh, it should be in chunks. In chunks, yeah. They're gonna hopefully. Doug, are you starting this fall or? Uh, we actually probably will once we get all our approvals, we'll finish up all the engineering, which will take a few months, and uh, we'll be probably putting it out to bid right around the first of the year. So hoping for a spring start. Spring start. And it's a three to five year project. Any other public hearing questions? Yes, Mr. Frazier. American Theater, how many buildings is that going to be? I have to refer that one to Doug. Is it? Uh, Give me look, one moment to come on up. I'd have to look at the print. Um, it's less than it was because <laughs> they're taller. Um, there are eight apartment buildings. Eight. I was going to say seven. So eight. All Thank right. You. Ask your question. How many? Some have. Some have, I can't remember the numbers. And some of the buildings have a certain number of apartments, and some have different. They're not all the same, correct? There's actually a uh, majority are twenty-four unit apartment buildings. And then one is split into uh, two 12 unit buildings. Yeah, I knew there was a little difference. I can not remember. And there's uh, one, two, and three bedroom units. Correct. Correct. There's uh, approximately 25% one bedroom, 50% are two bedrooms, and 25% three bedrooms. And the main floors are all accessible, correct? That is correct. That was a. That was the thing for me. <laughs> that was the nod they did because, as you know, disabilities is, if we're lucky to live long enough, we're all going to be disabled. Be there someday. So we need to have housing accordingly. And we have to think about veterans. And being, everyone. Yeah. They're a big part of the dis disability mm -hmm. groups. Yeah. No, it's a huge, it's a huge thing. Any other questions for the hearing? Then I will take a motion to, do you have another question, Mr. Frazier? Okay, you had that very intense look on your face. Well, maybe there's not money in that area. Okay. Oh, that's, that's... Cause you know, that's like pocket change laying around. <laughs> oh, baby, oh, right. <laughs> that's the steam powder. That'd be thing. ideal, wouldn't it? Mm. We can get you a ladder. Oh. Maybe two. <laughs> I mean, we could just duct tape them together. It'll be fine. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll send him up there. Sorry, with some Marty. Hands. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Any other questions about the public hearing? I will take a motion then. Do I need a motion to close the hearing? Yes. You do not need a motion. You can declare it if all public comment. Okay. Any other public comment then on this? I'm going to declare it closed if there isn't. Then I'm going to close the public hearing. Process or alliance. License renewal for trip provisions for LLC located at 4116 17 Mile Cedar Springs, Michigan. The applicant failed to timely renew the city license for a recreational adult use marijuana retailer. The license shall be provided for an opportunity to clearly state the legal and factual reasons for the late renewal. The city council must approve or deny the late license to the parcel number 4102361104. And again, I need to open a public hearing on this. So I'm opening the public hearing. And um, to understand my understanding of this, um, because again, I believe these folks spoke at Planning Commission Tuesday night, is that there's already someone else to renew this license. Is this not the same thing? Oh, then I don't know what I'm talking Maybe about. Here. Never mind. Would someone like to, because <laughs> I thought this was the one that was the transfer. No, that's no. on Main Street. Okay. Okay. I just know that there was an issue with trying to figure out how to 
close it on one and open it on another and so this is this is the business in the um subway plaza like life farms is the retailer this is the processor for that business got it okay this so. this this business did not renew on time. We've had one other of these in the past mm -hmm. on yes. Main Street. <laughs> yes, we did. Oh, so. <laughs> are they here to speak on? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Sorry, <laughs> I, I, I was talking. There literally was one before I'm transferring council. my license. I didn't know that. There was, there, was one, there was one before the planning commission Tuesday night that is switching, and yeah. there seem to be some complications with how to make that happen. Yeah. So I'm Dave Koistra, licensee for trip provisions, and uh, not really any good excuse other than oversight and some misunderstanding. Um, a lot of the renewals um, we get reminders on, Cedar Springs doesn't do that. Um, we've implemented some self reminders for that now um, so that going forward in the future, there won't be any more issues with that. We've had our CPA put a reminder, Matt did, I did. So that's kind of where it was at. Okay, any recommendations from the manager or the clerk? I, this is not, we have done this before. I have a memo in the packet for you guys to reference. Okay. I did call the applicant on Monday before the expiration to let that would be expiring um, and unfortunately didn't make it in on time. Any questions, comments? Just a couple, we've had no problems with this particular organization. Okay. Any other? If memory serves, <laughs> it was five hundred dollars. And how are you fixing it? Does that? that I sound think that's right. Like where we landed. I believe that's where we landed. Mm -hmm. Two hundred and fifty was the penalty for the previous one. Was it two hundred? Oh, very good. Thank I you. I think it was up to five hundred dollars, and Perhaps we went that, with two hundred and fifty. Trying to not be ridiculous, but also not let it go. Yeah. Um, so we said. To, $250 is what we said last time. And Abe, how are you going to fix and it? How are you fixing yes. it? So I think we heard the how are you fixing it. Now the, the CPA has it on a tickler file. And for any other marijuana businesses that may be, you know, tuning into this riveting meeting. I know. Um we're so exciting. <laughs> I I would prefer not to have this discussion again. Because okay. it's a difficult thing with us for the state. Have you already applied Absolutely. for the you've already done your we did yep. work and everything for I this. brought it in i thought it was friday or i had to have it in by friday so i um i pulled up your address friday and online it said you were closed um so i tried calling at like 12 something and i didn't get through to anybody so then um rebecca and i emailed back and forth that after like later that afternoon but i was up north um so I shot in first thing Monday and dropped off the application with the application fee. Um, so. Okay. Do we need anything with the state? Uh, the state will just be notified of the violation. It's up to okay. them how they'd like to proceed. We just have okay. to notify them of that. Um, in my report, it does state that there are no other current violations or any other reason to, to deny the license. Okay. Um, it's just one of those procedural things that I didn't have the authority to approve of it because of right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then, any other comment? Yes, Miss Nixon. Just, just one more again for any marijuana licensees <laughs> following along at home. My nursing license expires June twenty second of twenty twenty four, and it's my responsibility to know that. And if for some reason Lara is closed on that particular day, it was my responsibility to renew before then. Yep. That yeah. makes sense. I had the date. So your, yours is that it has to be in 30 days before. So that's where it messed me up. I had it in that we had to do it by such and such date and just missed that detail, which is my fault. I'm not trying to point fingers at that's my fault. This is this, this is, is a general just, announcement. We're figuring out that the land of yeah. YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Making sure they hear that. Teacher too. that has to have all of their sketches in yep. and documented with the state and pay a hundred and whatever dollars. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Mine is mine is June 31st. I'm good at keeping 30. details. So going forward, we'll have that. Sure. And and you fixed it. So this is more for the Yep. 
Yeah, you probably have one too, right? Yeah, but I'm not going to bring that up. Move <laughs> <Hold> on. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Anything else then? Then I will close the hearing and we are moving on because I don't believe we need to vote on these. We're just holding the public hearing, correct? There's another. Slide. Well, during during the action items, but at this point, we I don't need to vote to close the hearing. Correct. Nope. As long as you've offered for public comment. Okay. So we're now closing the hearing, moving on. Is there any other public comments on this? If there are any public comments on Zoom, if you'd like to raise your hand or unmute yourself, now would be the time. Seeing none on Zoom. Okay, then we are closing the public hearing on this. Moving on to the adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion to accept the agenda? I make that motion. Right. And all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, we have an agenda. Moving on to the consent agenda. Council members may request that any or all items be removed from the consent agenda. A motion is then in order to adopt all items not removed from the consent agenda. Requesting the removal of an item from the consent agenda is a prerogative afforded each council member and does not require the support of other council members. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? I'll make that motion. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, you get to. You get to. Yeah. Um, the number D there. I I just don't have quite an understanding of it. Either we can discuss it now or put it in the action. Motion to approve resolution twenty twenty three seventeen A, a resolution to accept a contract for hot mix asphalt cold milling, resurfacing, and concrete pavement repair along Main Street from Church Street to 18 Mile Road. Mm -hmm. This is the the it's the Main Street project. Mm -hmm. but it, it's an MDOT project. It's not a city. Right. We're not doing the bidding out. So since MDOT is doing all that work for us, we have to have a contract with MDOT to make this this process work. So we're just uh, um, approving the MDOT resolution okay. to work with MDOT to to get the main street project main done street for us. Project. Okay, I support that then. Okay, so we good? Any Anybody else have anything on the consent agenda? All right, there's been a motion and a second and I will do a roll call since there's money involved on this. Ms. Atchison? Yes. Mr. Gross? Yes. Ms. Hamill? Yes. Ms. Nixon? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Ms. Race? Yes. And Mayor Conley votes yes. We have a consent agenda. Moving on to- Sorry, I yes. got Mrs. Atchison's um, motion, but I didn't catch the second. I think it maybe Rose. I think Rose. Rose was supporting it after she had the you. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's fine. Thank you for catching it for us. Action items: motion to approve resolution 2023-18A, resolution approving city water and sanitary sewer service to and affecting the conditional transfer of certain real estate real property from the jurisdiction of Solon Township to the jurisdiction of the city pursuant to the development of the cooperation agreement between the city and the township dated December 30th, 1999 for 14300 White Creek Avenue, Northeast Cedar Springs. I'll make that a motion. Do I have a second? A second. Any discussion? We've, we've talked this water system to death. I mean, just, uh, there's been so, I mean, the pipes going in and closing loops and how this is going to work and the sewer and the so on is, nope. I feel like we've, everybody feel like they're on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did. We, I think we did everything we could possibly do to make sure it was fair to everybody, our people and all the people that will be living there and on we go. And welcome to Cedar Springs. Mm-hmm. Uh, hearing no other discussion, I will do a roll call since we're making new places in Cedar Springs. Ms. Atchison. Yes. Mr. Gross. Yes. Ms. Hamill. Yes. Ms. Nixon. Yes. Ms. Powell. Yes. Ms. Race. Yes. And Mayor Conley votes yes. Moving on to item B, a motion to approve, deny, trip provisioning, LLC, marijuana processor license, effective July 7th. And then there's the staff report, application, trip provisions, notice to applicant, regulatory ordinance, zoning ordinance, notice of violation, which is what we just had the hearing on. We need to add in there that we're... Do the we need the $250 fine? If you would like to add that, yes. Okay, so please add the $250 fine to the motion. 
I would make a motion to approve trip provisioning LLC marijuana processor licensee effective July 7th of 2023 upon the condition of a $250 fine. Second. Any discussion? Go forth with your calendar. <laughs> I'll take a roll call. Ms. Atchison. Yes. Mr. Gross. Yes. Ms. Hamill. Yes. Ms. Nixon. Yes. Ms. Powell. Yes. Ms. Race. Yes. Mayor Conley votes yes. Moving moving on to motion to I make the motion to extend the city manager in interim pay until manager contract is negotiated. Um the current interim 90 days expires July 18th. So as of July 18th we should be extending the contract. I'll support that. Any discussion? Uh, do we have like a better deadline than until it's negotiated? Well, we're meeting tonight. Yeah. So then we have to bring it to the center. And we have to bring it back to you. But we're we're meeting tonight. So, so what, when are we going to see it? I would assume the next meeting. So I think she's looking for a deadline. That's like a long time because on both sides, that's it, especially if she's great. getting the oath like, of office tonight. So are we going to do a like a? What do you want to do? What's the next? Should we hold what's up the date or? for the next meeting? Yep. So can we do a thirty day extension, and then if we have to vote on and do it again. again because doing it without a deadline seems irresponsible to me. Does that work? Yeah. Does that work for you? Okay. Because I believe, um, I don't want to speak for the entire personnel committee, but I believe our intention is to have you walk out of here with the contract tonight. Right. So, I will I will change my motion for that date. Was it August? August 18th, 30 days. Yeah. 18th. August 18th. August 18th. Or sooner. Or upon completion of yeah. the contract. Is that does that is that work? Yes. Okay. I know we have the contract language from the attorney. Any other discussion? I do. Sure. Um there was a like a group of you that were getting together to make this like, yes. kind of go over this. When was that decision made? Because I missed the last the last meeting. meeting. At the last, last meeting. meeting, so you haven't been able to get together at well, all. Well, we've before. we haven't met collectively. We've yeah. met in we've pairs. Talked a little bit. Now we're, we're meeting not. with Darla. Yeah, and then we went to the attorney, and the attorney gave us some draft language, and then we got some stuff from Darla on what other people are. Okay. We've been kind of I don't know meeting digitally, I guess. Right. And then we're going to all meet after the meeting tonight. It should have something. Okay. Because yeah. we have we have the draft contract from the attorney. Okay. okay. And then we have some recommendations based on salary from other municipalities that have a similar. And we also have Michael's contract. And we had some concerns about making sure um I have I have Darla's resume in here that we okay, are but... equitable. Yeah, with our yeah, that's a no negotiation that we have. Right, to have. but I'm just saying, like we these are the specific things we're chunking in yeah. tonight, and okay. then it's going to be brought to the council because we can't do we can't make that decision. No, the council has to. Thank you. Yeah. So is that clear? Awesome. Any other questions? Discussion. Okay, then. So let me ask a yes. quick question. If there's something that they want to see in the contract, they should get a hold of us, like within the next um, week or so. Will this be emailed to us what your decision is going to be or what we you can, have yeah. made in so sure. that we know ahead of time? Because sure. I, 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 yeah, you should be. You I mean, we could send it out tomorrow. tomorrow. The council should see it before. Yeah, absolutely. Meet. That's what you know, the better would be. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah, okay. we're meeting tonight with Darla after right. this meeting. So I guess I could have forwarded the contract to everyone. I guess I thought that was uh, the personnel. That's okay. You can from the attorney. Okay, so, so we gotta 
vote on this. Right. I'm just, mm -hmm. is there any other discussion? Just a point. The proposed contract, not the contract. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Proposed. Yes. Okay. Sorry. There is a not, proposed not a certainty yet. No. And there's, there's spaces that have to be filled in, in it. The contract framework from the attorney is with us. Right. So, and, and Darla. Does that answer the question? Okay. Well, I will make a, a, a proposal to postpone the oath of office for city manager to next month. Okay. Does that sound right? I didn't get a clear motion. I didn't finish the other motion. Uh -oh. I was going to say, we still have to like do this so where we made the motion real supported, but then there was no vote. Uh -oh. No, because we're having a discussion about the extending the interim for 30 days. Yeah. I have until August 18th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whatever, whatever our next city council meeting is. Ms. Atchison, can you clarify your motion for me, please? Um, we are going to make a motion to extend. I make the motion to extend the city manager interim pay until manager contract is negotiated. Um, we would like to do that 30 days, um, have it expire August 18th or before. To expire August 18th or, or sooner. Sooner. Upon negotiation, negotiation of the contract. The finalization of the contract. On finalization. Ms. Powell, is that the motion that you'd like to support? Sure. I'll support Everyone's that motion. Sure. <laughs> Everyone's clear on the motion. Mm -hmm. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'll do a roll call. Ms. Atchison. Yes. Mr. Gross. Yes. Ms. Hamill. Yes. Ms. Nixon. Yes. Ms. Powell. Yes. Ms. Race. Yes. Mayor Conley votes yes. All right. We will get this sorted tonight. And then your motion. We can do. We'll just. So, you want to. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to table the oath of office for city manager until we have the contract approved. I second that. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Should any discussion? Aye. Is it going to change anything if we were to give the oath tonight? Unless, unless. The city manager, having received that oath, would decide she doesn't want that contract. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, no. I understand. That's my concern so with that. My personal there. opinion is there is no problem with giving the oath tonight. And she still has the option to opt out if she's not happy with it at the next one. I'm counting on that not being the case. I duly noted. <laughs> we will do our well, best. <laughs> we just, we just um, voted to extend the um, interim pay. I understand that. So she is an interim so, city manager. All we're talking here is title. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just. If we, if, excuse me. Go ahead. Sorry. If we take the vote tonight to create it as written, the oath as being city manager, we have now dropped the interim off from it. So it's just a matter of changing title. When she's, and it's particularly when she's dealing with other people. Exactly. My only, um, were you done? Sure. Okay, I'm sorry. You can finish. I did finish. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure I'm not cutting you off. My only concern was, would be, should we do a retro pay? Should we, to to where the oath is, or should it? We can. You know, is there, that, is there a. We could do that with the contract. Again, if I may. That's right now she's functioning under that with that amount of, of income. It's certainly in the title. All you're doing is dropping okay. the interim off. Mm -hmm. right. I believe it's important to be able to address things and people as the manager and wipe along that for another month. I just wanted to make that clear. And that's and fine. I that's believe fair. I believe that the manager, interim manager, what would, would, like, like, to, to would like to comment. Well, I so a position of manager, um, council cannot do retro pay. So that's why I put on the agenda to extend my interim pay right. until right. a manager contract is approved. So can we have you take the oath of office before you have a contract? I don't mind waiting. That's okay. fine. I'm 
I'm still under my oath as the finance director, so I'm still okay under oath, just not as the city manager, which is fine. I can wait till August 10th. Okay. Are you good? Am I good? Yeah. Whatever the will of the board it doesn't is. bother. I me. understand, but I'm. I I'm, have I have the option to say no. You I do. Say I just I want to just. I don't have a I don't have a preference either way. It doesn't bother me either way. I just wanted to make sure that we were making sure that if you were the manager, should we be paying you that instead of the interim? That's that was my only concern. I don't care. I mean, it's not a big thing for me. I mean, it probably she's would make also, it easier she, if it happened with the contract. She's date. also the finance director. So I know. Whatever I know. We're paying her, it's not yeah. enough. Right. So anybody else got anything? Yeah, spoken. Okay. And there's a motion on the table and a second mm -hmm. to have it on August 10th. Yes? Or sooner if we can get the contract negotiated and have a meeting. Motion I have is motion August, to pay August until the 18th. contract is approved. Approved. There we go. Wonderful. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Because she's a rock star. Yep. All right. I'll do a roll call. Miss Atchison. Yes. Mr. Gross. No. Miss Hamill. Yes. Ms. Nixon. Abstain. Ms. Powell. Yes. Ms. Race. Uh yes. And Mayor Colley votes yes. All right. You okay? Yeah, I'm just relaxed. Okay. Moving on to our next. Um, so we've we've tabled the oath of office, or we've moved the oath of office. Approve Fishback construction inspection for Main Street project. This is a big deal. Yeah. So unfortunately, we do not have um, staff on hand to do an inspection of this magnitude. Um, sure. Main Street project will be a very large project. Um, so Fishback being our engineering company, they have submitted a pro proposal to us to do the inspections during construction um, in an amount not to exceed $148,800. Um, we have 100, we, this, this estimate is a little bit higher than what we originally thought. Construction Shopping. costs are higher right now. Right. Um, we have 113000 in the budget. Um, so we got to come up with 50 ish thousand? 35800 is what we're short. So um, we can do a budget amendment next month or when we get to it, when this project gets going uh, to take care of that. But we do need inspector inspections during the project. So mm -hmm. I would make that motion. Support. Okay. Any discussion? I'm um, yes. Just uh, if it if the bid comes through, say the middle of August, or what would be a timeline on that bid? So we let uh, M. Dot know that we're accepting the low bid. Mm -hmm. We we did that Tuesday. They had to know by Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as all the paperwork is signed, we will have a pre-construction meeting, which will lay out the schedule. Mm -hmm. from beginning to end and mm -hmm. then as soon as I know that I'll let you know mm -hmm. um, our engineers did say though that uh, the contractor would like to get started ASAP possibly before the end of July so they know the first um, cheer, um, church to the bridge is a six to seven week project and it has to be done before red flannel mm -hmm. so they need to get shovels in the ground soon yes yes okay any other questions yeah, and construction costs are just higher. I mean, that's just everywhere right now. So, any other questions? All right, I will take a roll call. Ms. Atchison? Yes. Mr. Gross? Yes. Ms. Hamill? Yes. Ms. Nixon? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Ms. Race? Yes. Mayor Conley votes yes. Moving on to discussion items. The counter proposal from Solon Township for library services. You have that, I believe, in your email. Um, it's in the packet. And then you also all have a correspondence that is confidential from the attorney. And the Lakeland. And the a a um a position recommendation from the director of Lakeland, but it's not confidential in your email. 
I have I have printed copies mm. if for whatever reason anybody didn't get them. Is there um can I ask the question? Of course. Is it's there, a discussion. Okay. Is there anything I I would suggest that we deny or reject the the counter proposal. Is there any movement we can make on our side at all? I I I do have a rather lengthy statement on it that will address that. I don't know if you want that okay. now. You can do it if you'd like. Okay. So um for many reasons this came up and and one of them is that the library was terribly underfunded and I believe there was a question about Solon Township and what they paid and what that looked like for them so my understanding of the Solon side of it was that they paid the equivalent of a 0.4 millage on the property taxes in Solon Township now that is not in general fund Right, from the general fund. So that's not something that was sent out on the tax bill like we see, you know, GRCC itemized and the schools itemized. It wasn't itemized in that way. So Solon Township wrote a check that was equivalent to that amount, <clears throat> um, which was not um, equitable um, to what the city of Cedar Springs was paying. And even with the 1.22 mills that our citizens paid, that absolutely did go out itemized on their tax bill, the city would quite frequently just cut a check for whatever the library needed because the library needed it and the library is important. So um, it was quite a, 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 an unequitable situation um, and it was pointed out that there was some large pay and benefit disparity uh, for our staff um, in in contrast to what staff at KDL made. Additionally, uh, there's not a book budget. There's just not one. It does not exist. Um, and so the library survived on beg, borrow, and steal, um, which is just what they had to do at the moment to get through. Uh, that became an untenable situation as we realized that um, KDL is actually going to lower their millage for Kent County. And, and please do step in if I have the number incorrect, but I believe they are lowering their millage to 1.1 mills. So if this remained a joint venture between Cedar Springs and Solon, and Cedar Springs continued to pay more than the KDL millage, but got a library that was not as well funded as it would be with KDL, um, then this, this put us at a significant disadvantage. So um, we did attempt to address this previous um, with Solon and it was their position at that time um, that they did not feel they could move on the 0.4 mills that they, mill equivalents, excuse me, that they paid from general fund. So my, um, what I actually fought for uh, in, in, because these are our neighbors, and I, I really don't want to kick them out of a library. So I really don't. Um, I want them to be included. I want them to come along. Um, but we have to do so in a way that's fair to the citizens that we represent. Um, so what I had fought for was that step system because who wants to see their tax bill triple at once? That is, I can't even imagine being on the receiving end of that. And those aren't even the people I represent. Mm -hmm. But they are my neighbors, they are friends, they are extended family. So we're trying to be kind and, and bring them along in a way that is somewhat more palatable. So, and to clarify, the offer that we have put on the table, when you're talking about a counter offer, the offer we put on the table is 0.6 for the first year, 0.8 for the second year, and one, and 1 1.0 on the third year. I mean, so we're we're trying and we're going to continue to be at 1.22 that entire time. Correct. 
And if the library needs something, we will continue to. We will, and we have a budget item. I think we budgeted five thousand dollars. Is that correct for the library? And just out of our general fund that has nothing to do with that tax base. And then additionally, the DDA is providing the snow plowing, and the DPW mows lawn. I have just a fuzz mop. Sure, go right ahead. So, um. We have two options before us to best represent this, the citizens of the city of Cedar Springs. And one of them is to continue this community library, which many people have said that they would like to do, and I am not opposed. Um, the other option is to secure a tax cut for our residents and have a fully funded library. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to be a good neighbor here, but I, I think that Solon overestimates the power of their position. I, I think that, in, in fact, I know that if the city had to, it is not desirable, but if the city had to, we absolutely could float that library at its current funding all by ourselves. I don't want to. I don't think that's a, a good outcome, but we could. So Solon has the option to accept an equitable and what I think is a more than fair, generous neighborly offer, or they have the option to not, and either is okay. That's what I got. Thank you for listening. And that's why I asked that question mm -hmm. because yeah. I was hoping that we could get that all on the table mm -hmm. with what the difference is. Now there's other amounts out there that we pay so much dollars to there, so much dollars. Do you remember what that amount is? Yeah, so when we, and the dollars are probably off now, but um, back when the former city manager and I approached this, we looked at the total dollars that Solon Township was paying. And Solon, Solon Township is 60% of the people that use the library. So they're more, they're, they're the majority. And okay? currently I think they pay less than a third. And they pay about a third. And we broke it down by person, and the citizens of Cedar Springs, not counting the budget line and not counting the DPW expenses and the DDA, which we just added for the snow plowing, um, was, I want to say it was about $31. I might be off slightly, $30, 30 and some change um, per person for the citizens of Cedar Springs. And it was $13 for the $14 for the citizens of Solon. And those were the numbers that we presented to Solon last in October and said, um, and, and I will let you ask a question for clarification because we're oh, Solon resident. No, per person, per person, if you take the, we did it based on the total people that used the library, if I remember correctly, or was it total residents? Residents. It was total residents. I on every so. calculation, I'm, they're less. On millage, less. On per person, less. On dollar per dollar, less. And the offer that they're that. trying to make is this idea that somehow if they give the same amount of dollars that we put in for our 3,600 people for their 6,000 people, that that somehow makes it equitable. And it doesn't. It, it doesn't even, and if you, and um, well, you have advice from our attorney, but then also Ms. Dawes from Lakeland said that it's not how this is done. Mm -hmm. It is not how this is done. She said it is done with millage. It is supposed to be an equitable millage. She also said that when you contract for services, they don't get seats on your board. She told the library board that, and she told us that when she was here at our meeting, and she reiterated it when I sent this on to her to say, I would just like some, some comment on this. And I would also like to say that our library director quit and we cannot post that job because this is so underfunded and so, I'm, I'm trying to be polite in how- Hot I'm mess. <laughs> that Lakeland will not post the job. So, and Lakeland is our cooperative. You also have to have a dedicated millage to participate in Lakeland. 
And at the moment, we are the dedicated millage. They're not offering that. So I'm, and the offer we've put on the table gives them the opportunity to incrementally step up. And also the funding that the Lakeland showed us all the libraries in their cooperative. And they showed us where we were, our library, what we have for funding. We are one of the very lowest, lowest funded libraries. I believe Darla has the colored chart in yeah. front of her. So we are way on the bottom. Uh, and so our library cannot continue on its own without help. Um, our Our money that we're putting in is not even getting us like you said, a book budget. Yeah, there is not anything. The, yeah. the, books are, not the books are from people donating them. Mm -hmm. Like I have, for those of you who've ever donated to my birthday, I donate my birthday to the library to get books. And I try to get $10 for every year I am alive. And that was the entire, when, the year I turned like 48, it was the entire um, set of books for the summer reading program for the kids. That was, my birthday money did that. I mean, I don't, and that's great. And I'm glad that I could do that, but that's not how it should be. I have a question. Sure. So uh, this is a question for all of the board. Sure. <laughs> um, Are we in a position where we're just saying that that's our best and final offer or are we actually negotiating? Because... I don't think we should call it a negotiation if we're just going to give them an offer and say that you can take it or leave it, which is fine. I think the offer was fair, so I don't necessarily have a problem with doing that, but I think it kind of makes it confusing to be like, we're negotiating, but also not, we're not we won't bend to any of the points. I'm not going to say for me that I wouldn't bend to anything. I think that's what Lisa's if, question was. Is like, if, what are if, we gonna... if there were some question about time frame and gradation, I don't know. I would be open to discussing time frame. I am not open to negotiating the final amount and the seats on the board. And this idea that somehow they get to do this in perpetuity. They're asking for it in perpetuity. Yeah, no. A three-year contract that renews automatically. No. I, I don't understand that at all. I I just don't understand that. I mean, wouldn't it not renew if we said not to renew it? They That's not what they're asking for. Doesn't it renew automatically if nobody says anything though? They yeah. want it They want it to be the same way. Like we'd have to go six months again to and not that, renew it. And that we'd have to actually vote to dissolve. Any other discussion? My intention was to take a straw poll at the end she of wanted, the she Oh, wanted to ask. Sure. Sure, I'm sorry. About $85,000 a year. About. About. And Cedar Springs pays? 130. I have more numbers for you if you're interested. Sure, we'd love to yeah, hear she, them. Oh, I yeah. think she wants them, yeah. She's And, and I'm, I'm recognizing you because I know that you are attempting to try to sort this out from, she approached me before the meeting and said, I'm a resident at Solon. I don't understand any of this. Can you please help me? I can't, I can't find anything on it. <laughs> Correct, because they pay with a check out of general fund. Thank you. When you feel like it. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Well, I, I I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand. So numbers. You want her other numbers that she has? I'm okay, sure she's real. ready. She's got it. She's got a she pen in her hand. Always got numbers because she is on it. Well, I think this is where a lot of people like some confusion comes in, and so just taxable value for the city from 2022 is 97,330,000. So in townships, 22 taxable value is 223,806,000. So substantially so, more. Substantially more. <laughs> so our proposal to Solon Township, year one, 0. 0.6, but 0. 0.6 of 223,806 is $134,000. 
close to what we pay. Yeah, not quite. But not quite, but roughly. So it's still but under 0. 0.6. Okay, so then same taxable value, which it wouldn't be the same taxable value because taxable value goes up every year, either by the rate of inflation or 5%, whichever is less. Last year it was 5% because the rate of inflation was 7 point something. So if 223,806,000 at 0. 0.8 mils would generate $179,000 and one mil would be $223,800. Right. Thank you. And they have roughly 6,000 residents. I feel like that's the number. And then I believe- you have. Do you know how many residents are in Southern Township? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I want to us, get born, right? Us too. <laughs> Yeah. Other than we, we keep, well, we keep making more Cedar Springs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, right, Dwayne. So that's sort of a, a, you know, but we currently, I want to say the numbers are like 3,606,000. ,006, well, we're a class three library, which is population 7,000 to 11,999. If we're about 3,500. They mm -hmm. have 6,500. 6,500. For Google. Good job. Yeah. yeah. So this is, again, this is the struggle. There's so many more of them. I mean, this was part of the conversation. Well, this was part of the conversation we had with Mr. Green. Yes. And that's what and I was about 13, to talk 000. about. His 13,000 people that he wanted to pay. He's like, I'll give you the same amount of money you're getting. <laughs> like, you have 13,000 people. Where am I going to park them? <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, and it changes the structure of the librarian with very much. And very much. Hiring a, li a library director is what what we have to do. It is going to cost us more now than it did because they were we were not paying her really what we were underpaying. We should have been twenty thousand. So year. now anybody that's coming in is going to want more money. We we got really. Um, I was at that interview. I think I think you were also. Were you at Cami's interview? Uh, no, the one before that couldn't take the job because she wasn't getting enough money. Yeah, well, didn't even, no, there was a gentleman. So two people applied for the job when Donna retired. Two people applied that were qualified. There were more people applied, but there were two that met the requirement that were qualified. Mm -hmm. And then one of them on the day said, I can't possibly even drive over there to interview for okay. this salary. I thought that was a lady. So, and then, um, so Cami interviewed mm -hmm. and she was, phenomenal mm -hmm. I mean she was phenomenal mm -hmm. and it was wonderful mm -hmm. and they hired her but we're not paying her and then there's been all kinds of complications with mm. how she has been when she tried to put forth a budget and when she talked about a book budget and and Rose and I have been at every single meeting pretty close of the library board for a year? Well, at least six months I have. I, I just want to say the most disturbing part about this whole thing was when the Solon Township invited Algoma to join our library without any consultation with the city. You know, if they hadn't, if they had left KDL, they would have had to build their own library. Well, heck no, you guys, you come on into uh, the, our library board will let you come into the Cedar Springs Community Library with your 17,000 people. And um, there was no real discussion about anything. Oh, well, and we here we were sitting on pins and needles waiting for that election. And when it was over, we finally realized we could proceed with something. And um, also in the, at another meeting when we asked, what can we do about this uh, discrepancy in funding? And we were told the city signed this contract and the city will abide by this contract or um, kill the contract. So here we are. We had to do it. Didn't want to, but 
we just couldn't keep on with uh, this underfunding and no choice of raising more money from the bigger uh, establishment of Solon. We did we did ask initially before we dissolved the contract and we didn't make a proposal. We simply, um, this was the manager and I, the, the former manager and I said, these are the numbers mm -hmm. and this is a problem. Mm -hmm. And we cannot, the library is gonna go underwater. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got this 0. 0.4 plus 0. 0.4 equals 0. 0.8. <laughs> And, and, and the, the larger problem was that, uh, and, I, and I'm uncertain if it was simply ignorance or if it was hubris or if it was a combination of the two, is that there was never any consideration of the legal ramifications of the things that they were trying to do. So even if the library board had contracted with Elko, but there were legal ramifications to that um, that would have inevitably increased increased the cost and then we would be further underwater than we are now there were claims to offer a lot of money but their their own algoma's own board had no idea what was going on they're all going what do we have a plan for a library what are we going to do or are we going what are we going to get these services and it, they were just as confused and dumbfounded as everybody else in the deal except for soul and say soul and township saying eh, come on in we'll we'll take care of you so that they didn't have to build their own library my my final piece on this um having and i'm not saying it has to be the final from you all but for me the final piece on this for me was um this consistent conversation that I've had with people from the Kent District Library, from the State of Michigan Library, from Carol Dawes, from Lakeland, from our attorney, from the library attorney, from that equity is equal millage. Equity is equal millage. And as a person that teaches in Cascade, where they have very high property values, and they're part of KDL, they're paying 1.2, 1.22, depending on their Headley rollback. Everybody in KDL is paying that 1.2 millage right now, which is the same as what we're paying. And Sparta is, I believe, 1.1 or 1.2. And why is it that somehow Solon Township is acceptable to pay? 0.4 or the offer that they're making now is slightly less than 0.6 in perpetuity for library services that everybody else in Kent County is paying one point something and some change. I, I just don't understand that. And our citizens are poor. As if you look at it based on economics, because I was told that Solon can't afford it that their people don't make enough money. And if you look at the per capita income, it's dramatically lower for the city than it is for Solon Township. So I, I'm very confused by this idea that we are somehow supposed to subsidize the library service, dramatically subsidize library service for Solon Township just because. And I just, I can't justify that when representing our citizens. The first contract, yeah. It started before, like in the 1980s, as near as we could tell. And then there's, I don't know, we've had multiple conversations about how I'm, do we get I'm, there. I'm gonna just try to zip it real quick. Please. We both started at point four. The city was at a millage. This Solon was at 0.4 mil equivalent out of general fund. The library board at one point asked both municipalities to increase to 0.88 because oh, the more districts. funds were needed. Well, whoever. They were going to try to make, no, the district, Unknown. the district. I know. You're right. Yeah. I, I don't know that it was in the 80s, but in any case, at some point, the district put a millage uh, requesting 0.88 passed in the city, did not in Solon Township. Um, library was still underfunded and underwater. We were informed that we, as the council, had the power to increase a total 
of one mil up to a cap of two mils without a vote of the public because it was so underfunded we chose to do so and here we are that's a state of michigan library law yes. act that lets right. us do that. right and solon could have done the same so could say they have wanted to mm. yes and and solon's board could vote to do that tomorrow uh, they could have voted to do it six months ago Two years ago, 20 years ago, they could have absolutely voted. To they could have voted to do it last week. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just as a. Um, Thank you. Well, we. We don't want to kick anyone out of library. My, services. No, we don't. <laughs> my, my real job that I get paid real money for is to get struggling readers to read. I'm a support teacher. I, <laughs> right? But I'm a high school support teacher. Yep. That's what I do. And I have a classroom library that I have spent more money on than the entire book budget for the city library. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say about that. So I never want to cut someone off from my, I believe the libraries are like oxygen. Will we do any more discussions with, um, the township at all, or are we prepared to, or you're going to have a sit down or. I, my anything? intention was to take a straw poll okay. on this offer that okay. they presented. I well, I mean, if we're going to, if we're going to um, want to move forward, like get this going, we got, we've got to respond soon. Right. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the response should be. I know it should be for the financial end of it. Definitely, um, no. <laughs> um, I, that's what I how I feel. Um, and then um, the board, no. I mean, because like like it has the Lakeland said, that's not done that way. You don't you when you give services, you don't give them seats on the board. And also, we did it that way, and it didn't work. Right, it's and that not does not working. work. I, so I feel like we need to just respond with our non-negotiables because I feel like it's wasting time. Exactly. You give them other things yeah. and then be like, comment on this. And then they give it us a comment and then we just say like, yes, yes, thank you. yes that's a good idea. Huh? Thank you. Well, I think I mean, to respond. I right. they respond by October 13th. I mean, I honestly, that's up to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's we really presented nice. this April 13th. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And they could have accepted it April 14th. So if our non-negotiables are the millage and the zero seats on the board, mm -hmm. I feel like that's what our counter should be. That's what we're doing. Um, I just want to be clear we'll also, other things. your language that they added on all of this stuff on KDL, please read what our attorney says about that. I have a question, Molly. Hmm. When you said that Solon voted to not do the eight mil, was that the board that the voted no it was the, the residents voted okay. to not increase okay. the because i think i i can actually speak a little bit to that i was on the library board at the time and um under donna clark we tried to create a district library with solon and cedar springs and you have to vote to join this district to create this district that would create these seats and that would then everybody has to pay a dedicated millage Okay, so it was the whole district that they voted like, right. to make another and deal, but just with Cedar Springs. It would be just Cedar Springs and Solon Township. And the city voted, and it was going to be a 0.88 mil. The city voted yes, Solon voted no. And because the city voted yes for library services, we were able to just maintain that as a dedicated millage in perpetuity. Okay. So that's, I mean, that would have been like... <laughs> 1999, 2000. So it wasn't just there. the millage that they were voting on. It was a district also. So just so, Correct. so that we make that clear. Yes. Okay. They were voting on the millage thing. The district. To become a district. Yeah. So I wonder if it would be most productive for each of us to say what we feel is non negotiable. So mm -hmm. there is a generalized direction going forward. Yeah. Sure. Sounds good. Okay. Do I have someone who'd like to start or do you want me to just go down the line? I'll start. Okay. I can't support the uh, counter offer from Solon. 
Okay. Do you have non-negotiables? Non-negotiable. Okay. Do you want like what we presented? Yes. Okay. It's hard to not go with what we presented, but I, I if we're doing a negotiation, like Ashley said, there's got to be something we're willing to negotiate. So, um, Trying to think and of what I'm we could. I'm not necessarily saying that we should negotiate. You're just so, saying don't call it a negotiation. Because if it's not. when I first said that I would negotiate, I meant it. And I know you guys brought up a lot of background, which is helpful because that's just what happened. But I said that I was going to go into the negotiation. Clean slate. We're going to give you what's your what's fair on our side. And I'm pretty disappointed <laughs> with the counter offer because it literally supports everything that you guys said mm -hmm. that I said, we need to pretend like that didn't happen. And we're just going to go like, we're trying to make a library for two township city, whatever, for mm -hmm. two communities mm -hmm. to come together. <laughs> so I'm not even opposed at this point to just be like, this is yeah. our offer because I'm quite upset. So you want to say just the offer we have on the table is the offer. I'm fine with that. I okay. think that if we call it a negotiation, though, we need to be willing to negotiate on something. I We don't have to. That's up to Which you. Which is fine. I'm just saying in terms of wording, because sure. I don't want to say like we're negotiating and then they. We, we made an corner. offer. I think this is best and final. Yeah. I think it was more than fair. We gave them lots of time. I mean, they had so much time before. And then they just kind of like, a, like it's like busy. a slap in the face. Yeah, like some time. years are is still less than what we're paying. Well, it, remember so. we gave them this offer on April fourteenth. Yeah, it is. We're also July. trying to keep <laughs> afloat a library for people. Mm -hmm. Like if they on the library board and in Solon Township are also saying like it was a community library, then prove it. Like we're paying so much money. And it mm -hmm. still isn't enough. It's it's literally infuriating. Okay. So so just to clarify, your position is no on this, and you feel that the offer we put on the table should be our final offer. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I agree. Sorry. You're I in the same. Yeah, I agree. Me too. Okay. You too. Yep. Thoughts? I think there's more to it than this, though. Okay. okay. If we're not negotiating, first off, I voted for. The, the situation with the six months. Yeah, severing the contract. Okay. Reason being was to force people to come together and talk. We're really not talking, we're just still bickering back and forth. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was my purpose for saying it. I hate to see it fall apart. Yep. Totally. If they do not come back in the next two months, then do we just close the doors to Solon Township? That is what's going to happen. That's the point. Okay. Is that really where we want to be? No. Or, oh, wait a minute. Or do we want to negotiate? I understand we put it out as a negotiation. They toss something out. We toss something back. Now there's got to be, what are you willing to do? If they, they don't come back with anything better than what they've offered, then we shouldn't have to go any farther than what we've gone either. Right. The whole deal is this has got to be resolved in the next two months. Mm -hmm. If it's not, the doors are closed. Okay. Anyone That's else? That's the way I see it. Because if their money's quit coming, then we've got to shut the doors for a great more deal, more time, and offering what we offer right now. And that's why I'm so infuriated because I shouldn't care more about Solon people being able to go to a library than Solon Township. But that's what I'm saying. But it was set out there for this six month period. And if it does not come back, we say, okay, take your your point four right now and we'll forget it. Then now what have we done? We have hurt not only the people in Solon Township, but what have we done to the community, the city, of Cedar Springs. No, that's not necessarily true. Well, wait a minute. You're going to have to cut hours. No, that's not necessarily true. 
It's not necessarily true. It is not necessarily so if true. the expenses are there, keep it open the way it is now, and we're struggling to do that, how are you going to do it with less money coming in? Well, we'd have 65,000 less people, or 6,500 less. But, I understand no, I, I can tell you how. You wouldn't need that much. I more. can tell you how. Well, then why are we even bothered to talk to them anyway if we can run it? Well, I'd like Solon to be a part of it. That's what I'm saying. That's well, why so I'm so I, frustrated because we can't, talking, we can't we can't run it without wait, joining wait, wait, KDL. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. We're saying we do not have enough money to run the library. Under the we configuration. Have that, we have said that over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Now we're saying, well, we'll survive without you. Yes. To the degree we are right now. No. That's what I'm saying. So no, now, you now if we're we can't live up to what we have now, then how are we going to maintain what we've got no. without any of it? We That's can, all I'm saying. Do you want to we answer it? To, I we would. need to get this. We need to get it negotiated. Okay. Here. Molly can answer it for you. So the, the fact of the matter is, is that we have slated the marijuana money that comes in from that tax revenue sharing from Michigan for lots of really great fun projects around the city. Um, but they're optional and the library isn't at least not in my book could we float it as it is right now yes we could but that means that our citizens and the people we represent are now subsidizing an additional 6500 people that's not fair jerry and you know it oh well, i just told you we're shutting the door to solon township no, that's not a choice we're making. That's a choice they are making. And but that's what that's I'm saying. We would we would shut the door off simply because that's what I'm saying. There's okay. there's an additional piece of this. KDL is 1.0. Okay. KDL is going to be going up for a public vote for 1.0 millage on August of 2024. 1.1. Less than our 1.22. Okay. And we can be part of KDL. We can go under a contract with KDL right now with our current funding. And they would staff us and everything at the exact level that they're doing. Now, I'm not advocating that we should. But is it an option? It is absolutely an option. And it is an option that doesn't involve our citizens paying for library service for people who aren't paying. I do not believe KDL is the sole or you know savior of this library. I don't. There are costs that come along with KDL that we don't have right now. They are not going to necessarily support the library, the building, and so on and so forth as much as us. A lot of what they take in is to uh, be able to afford to provide for their employees and so forth, which they deserve. And I'm not I'm not taking that away from them. The reason why they want gaming and stuff in is to bring people in. Is gaming something, like I say, for uh, esports? Is that something we need in a library? And if it was such a value, why wouldn't the schools with a full library lab or a a computer lab support the sports within the school system the and keep the kids there. The schools don't have public libraries. The schools don't even have school libraries they anymore. The public library. The schools don't even have, have school computer, libraries. They have, have travel lab. Yeah. Yeah. They, okay. have, they have computer labs. So KDL is KDL. not necessarily and, your savior. And this this discussion is not about KDL. Mm -hmm. This is they very. I brought it up, brought it up as okay. it is so, an option. Ex excuse me a moment, please. Mm -hmm. So here's where we are, Jerry, is Cedar Springs city residents are subsidizing this library right now. That's true. You're right. I am, we are reaching. We are right. reaching as far as we can to help Solon come along in the least painful way possible because we are not trying to penalize them. I, I'm I, not dis Molly, I'm not disagreeing okay. with the idea that I want them here. What I'm disagreeing is saying is that we gave a drop dead line saying this was going to be resolved in six months. If it's not resolved in six months, they, we now shut the doors to Solon Township saying you can no longer come in because they're going to withdraw the monies that they're supporting it with. That is so so in order to do that, 
we're going to have to make some some changes to hours, personnel, and everything else as far as operating to try to be able to cover it with what monies we have, which we're saying yes, we could cover it, but it would you're losing you're losing over half of the people that are going to be using it. How many hours do you want to keep it open for half the number of people? It's economic. <clears throat> And that's all I'm saying. Okay. We need to get this resolved in the six months that was required, and we need to work at it. I say that we stick with what was offered. I think it's fair, a gradual increase. And if it doesn't work with them, then we have no option. We're okay, so to, to clarify your position, today. to clarify your position, you support the offer that we presented. Yes, and I think we've gotten off from that original question to begin with. Do we support that or don't we support it? There's been a lot of talk otherwise about resolutions, what we're going to do if my contention is get this solved in the six months. If what we have offered is what we can best we can do, that's the best we can do. Okay. They're going to have to understand that and come to that level. If they can't, like I said, in six months, we lay down the gauntlet the gate will close, and when that gate closes, then we are going to have to have a find some way to support that with the loss of what they are providing, which means closing the doors at times. Maybe. No, without you're telling me we can't operate solely on our own. And what we're doing, we need the additional monies. I'm telling you that we can't operate fairly on our own without additional money. That we exactly. need to, That's what I just said. there's a difference between can't and can't fairly. Well, then you're going to have to go back to the people of the city and say, okay, we need to support more to maintain what we have. Right, which yeah. is where we were talking about taking the money from marijuana. I don't want to have to do that either, because then it's even worse. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be blackmailed by saying you either come to what agreement we have or else. Because the or else is not going to be satisfactory for anybody, including us. Okay. You can only do so much, though. I, you're right. And I if, feel we, like... if we reduce the income we have right now from what we have, that so much shrinks. But the or else came when they gave us this offer. I, I'm it's not... like we're starting at $100, and then they said $5. And we thought they were going to say 75 and then now we're moving down to 80 No. And I'm not disagreeing not. with that. I'm not disagreeing it's not with that. Game. This is not a game. Like, yeah. Um, Lisa. I got a question. Darla, um, how often were you, did you try and, you tried to, to talk with Solon Township quite a, quite a bit, right? Three times. Also yeah. that. Yeah. Did you talk, did you talk to them or were mm -hmm. they? Yep. Okay. I went and visited them, emailed and phone call. So four, yeah, she, four what? times for us to get this offer. And no, by it's... the way, we are to having this conversation about this offer that they presented, what, a week after they yeah. dropped it? Less than that. Well, yeah, it just came. It's just, it was dated June 28th, but I um, I emailed them and said, my packet is going out on this date. Do you have something for our board to consider? And then it was hand delivered to me the next day. And Literally we all, and I contacted <clears throat> Lakeland, I contacted our attorney, I disseminated that to you all. And we are having this public conversation about it. Have I mean, Rose, you attended meetings. We're trying to get minutes of their meetings. We cannot see where they've had any public conversations about what their policy should be or what this should be. And we gave them our initial offer on April 14th. It's July. There are options for Solon to provide library services to their citizens. I, I have, I'm not sure about Lakeland if they will allow like to dispense uh, library cards to them or they're surrounded by KDL. I know they can get library cards from KDL. So they, it isn't like- If they pay for them. Yes, I, and I think the township should pay for them actually. But there are library services out there, you know. They're like hundred bucks or something. You can go to any KDL library. It's it's very complicated, and I don't know all the details. But um, 
it's out there. If this happens, Solon will not be completely skip, uh, stripped of library services. They're still available. And I think we could research or they could research. I was going to say, not our job. <laughs> their, those details. And I do remember. But we don't want that to happen. I mean, we want Solon involved. And I just wish that that their, their citizens, Solon citizens, actually knew what's going on yeah because which is why i'm letting you yeah, ask questions right. and... because it does not sound like any of this any of this has been public it has. so the citizens are not even given been given the opportunity to make the decision it's being made by your own board and not even being discussed. being talked discussed publicly for the and that's why i feel bad that's yeah. why i feel bad for the yeah. citizens I believe Rose, were you at that meeting? Yeah. <laughs> it was just. Mm. Oh, you're yeah. talking about the library board meeting. Yeah, it oh. was uh, hopefully um, the city of Cedar Springs will make the right decisions in regard to the contract. Um, what does it say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That in that those that's are minutes from the library. Library. Board. That's the library. Yeah. So I, I think we were at Yeah. So I'm that's just okay. I'm just getting these. So I have Rose, I have Jerry, I have Renee, I have Ashley. The only thing I, I think maybe I could budge on a little in our original offer is timeline. I'd be willing to stretch it out to four years, but mm -hmm. still no seats. Still, eventually we get up to an equitable millage. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to do it in steps. I'm not trying to be unreasonable. Um, but the rest of it is non-negotiable. No seats on the board. Um, absolutely not. We have and, raised a dilemma. So should we just um, make a motion to um, reject the counter proposal? You can. I have this as a discussion item and my well, intention. I, if we're going to do it, we let's can. get it back okay to them right that. away. I would like to make a motion to uh, reject Solon Township's offer on the contract for library services and refer them to the YouTube recording for notes. Is there a second? I support. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, I'll do a roll call. Ms. Powell. <laughs> voting yes, yes negates it. Yes. That sounds weird. You're voting yes to vote no. Mm -hmm. So you're a yes? Yes. Okay, Ms. Atchison. Yes. Mayor Conley votes yes. Ms. Nixon. Yes. Ms. Hamill. Yes. Ms. Race. Yes. And Mr. Gross. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and I will just, we're moving on. I agree on the um, concept of wanting to be able to negotiate, but I am like with Nixon. The only place I would be willing to negotiate is on time. The whole point is negotiate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in yeah. good faith. Yeah. And this idea that they, this language that they put in about controlling our elections regarding KDL, like that's a, that's very strange. I agree with the negotiation part of it, but it has to be, it has to come to us. Like we As put out something a good faith we, offer, they is, put out not a good faith offer. That's the key negotiation, it's a give and take. And yeah, we gave we've already. given. I'm just telling you that we know, because tonight there was something that's staying stated but yes, we could possibly budge on this. Okay. So we're not Gosh. dead set with what we're doing. I'm just saying that that's part of what I personally wouldn't negotiate yeah, on the timeline. I'm just, I'm just telling you that was brought up tonight. So yeah. We, okay. we, we got it. We're moving on. Yeah. Moving on. I really appreciate, I just want to say your due diligence. This has been a difficult issue. It's involved a lot of emotion. It's involved a lot of people making threats <laughs> it's involved first time we've talked 
we mm -hmm. felt comfortable sitting here yeah without having people yelling at us mm -hmm. yeah or with and weapons. it's like we're saying interesting things saying interesting things with weapons mm -hmm. yes so all right, next time. um thank you i just want to say i appreciate all of you i appreciate all of you stepping in the gap jerry i so appreciate you and you like just you know continuing to i know it's difficult that you have roles out in Solon Township. Uh, that that you... doesn't even come up. Okay. I've, said, I've discussed this before. I work for those people. I work for Nelson Township. Right here on this board, I am working for the city of Cedar Springs. Well, that's what I want to say. Well, you do a wonderful job with that. So the fact that where my employment is has nothing to do with this. And if it becomes a problem from them, we can solve that too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to say I I appreciate I appreciate your candor in that what could be a difficult situation. So only if I allow it to be. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. So moving on to uh termination agreement for friends of Skinner Field. I am confused. Are you gonna address that first? Because what okay, yeah. Go yeah, ahead. Darla probably can address that. Darla first. can address it. There's oh, okay. a whole lot of you have a seat. <laughs> stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. Would you like me to start? Please. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so honestly, prior to being interim city manager, I I was really no part of Friends of Skinner Field. Um, stuff was presented at the council meeting, but that wasn't part of my role. Um, shortly after I was appointed interim city manager, my phone began to ring and emails came in from um, various people. And the it brought my attention to the agreement that the city has with Friends of Skinner Field, um, the bylaws, the agreement. Um, so I started looking into things and just reading through the agreement, um, you know, high level seven member board, um, the, the detail that's supposed to be brought to the city council from Friends of Skinner Field as to, you know, who's playing, when they're playing, the details of every year need to come to the board along with the financial statement. Um, maybe I'm critical of the financial statement because that's my passion, but but seriously, I mean, a financial statement that shows you're in the negative, to me, you're in the negative. Um, so just in my interpretation and communicating with various people that have reached out to me, um, bringing stuff to my attention, um, the, the Lara, nonprofit status that was terminated in 2019. It, it's now back in, in good standing, but 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, um, the insurance that lapsed. I mean, it's just the more I dug, the more, in my opinion, I, I really appreciate the attention to detail that Mr. Kipart has put into this since he and I first met shortly after I became interim city manager. Um, he's, I can see he's trying. He, he did got the insurance reinstated. He got the Lara certificate um, in good standing again. But I just feel personally on behalf of the city, it's time that we terminate the agreement with Friends of Skinner Field. If you approve this tonight, it starts a 60-day 60, 60 clock that in the next 60 days, we need to wrap things up, work on things. In no way am I saying we are abandoning Skinner Field. I just think it's up an opportunity for us to sit down with new leadership, new roles and come up with a new lease to continue and hopefully increase and and take advantage of this asset as somebody pointed out earlier it is a huge asset to our community but i don't think it's being utilized to the best potential okay my thoughts and do you do we have like an idea of what who would what what would replace it then? Do we That's have my question? Yeah, yep. do we have people coming forward. So I I've approached um NKCE and maybe they can be a part of it. I I wasn't sure how to far how far to go. Like I couldn't settle everything you know before tonight. Um I so in the community this there's there's scuttlebutt out there. You know this is happening. I've been contacted by Cedar Springs Youth Football, um, Casa and uh competitive cheer that those three, they all have boards, want to meet with me to help us come up with a resolution on how to move forward. They're the users of the field. 
the, the main main majority of them. And and it has been a struggle for some of these groups. I mean, I've had yes. these groups come talk to me about when we weren't hearing from you for months and months um, about like who is in charge of this and how is this working and what is happening. And I think I remember um, Ms. Powell at one point, you were asking like, when are we gonna get a report? And how is the, cause we, I think you've probably had some people also come to you with a like, how is this working? Yes. Um, there was a lot of concern last year when the semi-professional football started. Yep. And there was a lot of issues with, and I I, under, I appreciate um, Sergeant Propes having addressed some of that, but it isn't, it isn't the youth football that we were, that we were shooting for the field to be. And, and I will say that, um, I live across the road from Skinner Field, mm -hmm. and I um don't enjoy the participants of the semi pro league. I don't enjoy the music they choose to play. I don't enjoy some of the things they choose to say over the loudspeaker. And this is not when games are happening. This is usually pregame. Um, I don't enjoy it, and I understand that at some point, um. An organization needs money to function. Friends of Skinner Field certainly did uh, solve problem for the city. But I'm having trouble finding fault with the argument that you don't see people real regularly. There's things that haven't happened. I, I need a plan. And a board? Sure. Yes, yes, yes please, you're, you're part of, yes. Yeah. As we said, you get to have a conversation with us. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'm I'm just going to start with it, it's exactly as um, um, the city manager stated. Um, is how this all started was with some complaints that came to her, and that got me on her radar, which for YouTube world is not where you want to be. Um, but it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I mean, it was kind of fortunate though because I had dropped the ball on a couple of things. And let me just start, and I'll make this as short as I can. 2018, 2019, uh, we lost a great uh, treasurer. It resigned, didn't lose like permanently. Um, well, he died is what you're saying. No, he's sitting over here. Um, so top notch uh, uh, treasurer. And then we had uh, a secretary who was just on things. We lost them both in 2018 and at the end of the season in 2019. My thought process was mistakenly, and I missed this in the lease and I know better, I am a licensed broker in the state of Michigan. I am a licensed property manager and I missed it in the lease. So I have no excuse that we were supposed to have a seven person board. I referred to the state where it said I had as a, not, as a nonprofit I had to have three directors. So we had fallen to three directors at that point at the end of 2019, but I thought I was still in compliance. I dropped the ball on the seven. Then 2020 happened. Mm. Well, I didn't recruit. We didn't even know if we'd have a tenant. At that time, we only had one tenant, uh, and that was Cedar Springs Youth Football. Um, they were, they did manage to put together, I was the field director for youth football at the time. We were able to put together a season and we were able to get some revenues in. And then we started a can drive and we did some things. I don't know if anybody followed that, but we were able to do some improvements that year. It turned out okay. But what I didn't do was recruit board members. Um, we just tried to survive the year as, as a lot of people did financially. It, <clears throat> it actually turned out really well. The community came together. They couldn't turn their cans in anyway. We ended up having to return them for three years. I think we still have bags to do. So um, and anyway, so, I mean, that's one positive, I guess, that came out. And then we, I went into operation mode. I, I, I'm, I'm the landscaping guy. I'm just out there to make sure that the field's ready for the kids, so on and so forth. It was my job as president and director to make sure that to take the secretary's job. The secretary's position that was vacant at the time would have been filing those annual reports. I didn't do it. I know better. I'm the one that filed for the Articles of Incorporation. I know the requirement. I just missed it. Um, and it didn't, and, and then of course it was it was lapsed or, or whatever they uh, d dissolved at the uh, state level after I believe it's two are missed. So of course there was no reminders, there was nothing coming out. And then when this complaint happened, 
and the city manager brought it to my attention that it had happened. And I immediately jumped on it. Now, again, there is no excuses. I dropped the ball. I was the acting secretary at the time. As far as the updates, <laughs> yeah, she ripped my uh, financial report apart. But that, be that being said, well, I would never try to match wits with, with her financial abilities. But it was my understanding that I wasn't supposed to bring, and maybe I, I, and, until she just corrected it when, when she explained it to me, I didn't think it had to be a full financial report. I thought it was just supposed to be a summary of the year's thing. And that has been corrected. I mean, if you want bank statements, I will come in here every month with the bank statements and give you a report uh, uh, as to what's going on. But I, I did not know you wanted it that in depth. The $426 was the operating loss for the year, not our negative balance and what we were holding. Um, and that was because of a big repair that we had had. Now, we also spent from 2020 to 2023, which is not that long, feels like forever, but um, trying to recruit additional users of the field, okay? I've been after CASA since it, it, a couple of you were on the board, I believe, back when um, Friends of Skinner was created. And if everybody remembers, uh, I was the football field director at the time, and I tried to get football to take it. They said, yeah, we'd love to take it and run it when we do football. Well, you'd have, no, you'd have to run it when soccer wants to use it too. Well, no, we don't want to do that. Well, who does? You know, no one sport wanted to run it for another sport or be responsible for it. So the idea was that an organization had to, and I think the quote was play nice. It had to give equal opportunity to all the youth organizations to be able to utilize the field on a first come first serve basis and wouldn't be biased to youth football over soccer, over competitive cheer, over whatever. And it had to be accessible to other non-youth with youth being the priority, but adult leagues as well. We couldn't just say, no, we don't like you, so you can't play. OK, um, so that was my understanding in my mission statement. And, and, and from what I understood from the lease, I didn't have the power. Uh, Skinner Field doesn't have the power. Friends of Skinner Field doesn't have the power to turn anybody down who follows the letter of the law and are part of the community, whether it's an adult league or, or, or what it is. It would take city council saying that, no, it's our property. We're not going to allow this. So to skip ahead to the, the, the adult leagues, we tried that as a revenue stream. We kept getting, getting problems. I came to the city manager at the time and I said, look, this is causing an issue with the city council and friends of Skinner because I can't control it. I mean, they're going to cuss, they're going to play the music. And it's, I have told, I don't know if you were home at the last game when they tried to play some workout music and I announced over the speaker to shut that thing down. And they did, but they do. It's, it's, and I told them, I said, look, we're in a, in a community. It has to be PG language. I don't care what music you play, but you can't be my, using that kind of language yeah but i can't be well and this was early in the day but it doesn't matter there was really abrasive language and you just can't blare it over their speakers that they brought it wasn't over skinner speakers but they bring their own nowadays you know what i mean so anyway not to get too much into that i came to the city manager and i said look i don't want any problems with the city on this and i keep getting complaints and there's not much I can do about it if we don't want, because I would have so many citizens from all over saying, we don't want that there. I'd have football parents from the youth groups saying, we don't want it there. I think they thought that I could just say, okay, you know, we're not going to allow it. Well, we didn't have any police reports. We didn't have anything that would allow me to say no. So I came to the city manager and I, and I asked, can you approve these can they come to you and have to go through your steps because i don't know what to do he agreed and if you remember uh we had this discussion at a city council meeting and he said yes from now on they have to come through me okay and i was great i don't need the money they weren't paying anyway originally now this year they actually are paying game by game and everything's going well finally but in years past, they had kind of stiffed us anyway. We weren't getting paid. I, and, and on top of all the headaches we were having, you know, it is what it is. And it was a new owner. And here's the thing. You the weren't question insured become, that whole time? No, we were insured that whole time. We had a one-week lapse. <sighs> we had a one-week lapse, which, by the way, and I've submitted all the documentation, the most unlucky, stupid thing happened in the middle of her investigating everything that was going on. 
our renewal was in May, May 9th, I believe. Um, I thought my treasurer had told me that he had put it on auto pay. Didn't think anything of it. I saw the renewal notice come in, just like we get a tax bill that says this is not a bill. That's what I thought it was. And then all of a sudden, no, it's not. It's lapsed. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I scrambled to get a hold of them. They, I had to fill out the, um, there was no loss uh, during that one week period of time. It might, and it might be eight days. I'm like, I don't know what it was exactly. Um, they reinstated the policy effective back to the original date with the, obviously the caveat that I, I signed a statement saying there were no losses during that week and there weren't any. Um, so yeah, and it, it's paid up for the year and it is on auto pay. And I have, I set it on auto pay and I have forwarded that documentation onto the city clerk and to the city manager. So that doesn't happen again. Um, so. I have a question. I do. I do. Yes. So I recognize that friends of Skinner solved the problem. I think absolutely good. I'm mm -hmm. thrilled that someone is taking care of Skinner Field. Mm -hmm. And it, the adult leagues, that's a separate issue. I remember it coming before council and mm -hmm. we discussed it. And, and I, I'm not going to hold you or his friends of Skinner Field responsible for their behavior. If I felt strongly enough, I certainly am a big girl and would have marched myself right on over there oh, and said all the things. Mm -hmm. um, but instead, I had a discussion with my daughter about things. And it was a, a point of growth, I think. Um, <laughs> anyway, so... Every couple of years, I get a mea culpa from you about this, though. Like, I feel like it's it's a good organization. Mm -hmm. You're doing good things. The paperwork administrative is a mess. We got to have a plan, guy. Yeah, I and and I absolutely agree. And I've taken steps um, and 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 told the city manager what my um, well. First of all, we've added a secretary who is just going to be phenomenal I, and and i'm sorry what i'm not, I'm not and then and then as far as as far as tracking um i'm uh, i'm asking as much as telling because i don't know exactly what you want to see if you want monthly reports if you want monthly bank statements if you want me to be here on on the back where you've got departments and i come in here and i tell you what skinner field's done every month i would be happy to do that um i wasn't I had had conversations with the previous city manager about different things. And I'm not saying that he didn't want those things, but I was never asked that. I'll do whatever you have. I'm a champion for Skinner Field to make sure that it's there for the kids and no one is more passionate about that field than I am, period, no if, ands, or buts. And, now, and would somebody have run the administration back inside of that? I can't deny that. Yeah, it would have been. Um it was a mess. I let it become a mess. I got too focused on the operational side and not the and, and not the administration and, side. And maybe I can fix that. Shouldn't be you. What? Maybe we should get to a place where that isn't you, well, where I, you get to do the operate the, the the you get to mow the lawn. Well, and that being said, I did offer. Uh, uh, well, not offer. I did state that I would be a hypocrite saying I'm a champion for Skinner Field to stand in the way of progress too. Okay, so if there was a better I can be much better. It'd be hard to be worse. At the administration side, I did drop the ball. I got too focused on one area, not the other. Um, sorry. So I, I love your passion, but yes. you, you didn't let me get all the way. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Yes. So I know, mm -hmm. I know you're in it for the kids and I love the work you do. Mm -hmm. My question is, there are in our community some established boards on various, mm -hmm. various I, football, cheer, soccer, what right. have you. I wonder if maybe we could incorporate Skinner Field in a new way that mm -hmm. um, pulled some know how and talent from each of those boards. I, I wonder if maybe that would be a better place. I think that. Maybe we do need to relook at the lease. I'm mm -hmm. not interested in kicking you guys out, but I think maybe we need to re-manage it. I would agree. I, I know exactly what you mean. You need to have some safeguards and things in place. And I do want inputs I, from all of those boards. I, may, I would like to make some comments yes. as part of my service on that group at a given time. 
it was open to other various groups to have people to come in and volunteer their time with the Friends of Skinner Field. You have seven officers that were required. Those were people that volunteered and chose to. It was open for anybody to come in at any time and volunteer. You just didn't get volunteers. Okay. I would like to make sure that there's somebody from each of these groups that are there to be represented and have a chance to vote upon it as well as those. And I think that's what it needs to be, more wide open with the groupings to do it. Mm -hmm. You folks have no idea the number of hours that are committed as mm -hmm. volunteer. Sure. That don't reflect in any financials or anything sure. else that comes along with this. It's an ungodly amount of time. I, I really appreciated um, when this first came to me with the piece of not having the insurance and not having, because we're responsible for filing these financial reports. And we're, um, we just had this whole thing with the library where they're claiming that we supposedly didn't pay money. And we were able to be able to go and say, here, there's our audit. You put us in a position where we can't do that. And that's problematic. <laughs> um, when the city manager said to me, we should explore looking at another organization that has more manpower, like the North Kent, um, the NKCE, you need a better name, <laughs> you need a better name, um, that used to be the Parks and Rec piece, yes. taking over the, the, the managerial pieces of that, because this isn't working. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to have bylaws, you you gotta, I mean, the idea of like, I didn't know what our bylaws were, that they said no, we needed to be seven wasn't the people. Bylaw, no, it wasn't the bylaws. It was the lease that was given to us that said the seven. Um, our bylaws allow for uh, the okay. president to fill them you, in. Okay, I do know what the bylaws the were. I wrote them. You created the lease with that. Like that wasn't, we didn't say you the have- The lease was changed at the renewal, but 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 that being said, I, I should have known. I'm not going to say that I shouldn't have known what the lease said. I do that for a living. It's not a case- so much of beating up on yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It still comes down to volunteerism mm -hmm. and people getting committed, just sure. like anything else. Sure. I, the gentleman that's sitting here and talking about his sons coming up through and stuff, I would love to have him be able to go back and talk to some of these other parents and say, hey, you know, my son had the chance to do this. Let's get involved with this to make sure it continues. Whomever or whatever group it is that's doing it. It needs to be cheer. It needs to be CASA. It needs to be whoever. Yeah. Uh, the financing, there is a great deal there. Uh, I can tell you we went through rebuilding of a, uh, a concession stand that was yeah. flooded one winter. Yeah. And in order to break in, they had to break the door, get into it. And there was close to a foot of ice in there from a leaky water line that was forgotten to be flushed. $3,000 bill. $3,000 water bill, because of course the break happened after the thing. And we did not come to the city and ask for any relief. We did raise the money and we did pay that. But well, Sam, there's a lot of things that they have taken care of for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's a lot of things that need to be done for that field. Any group that you put in there, in my opinion, in my opinion, has to be dedicated to that field. My concern with using any other group to come in is, is making sure it's dedicated to the field and the use of it by multiple groups. If you bring in North Kent uh, enrichment or however it all does now, and AECD or whatever it is. Uh, uh, need a better name. Them in, are they understanding this is not a fundraiser to support all of the rest of our programs? And that would be my only you know, commitment. Whatever comes in as a result of the use of that field is committed to that field. Sure. Uh, well, can we make a board of like organize like people from the organizations that use mm -hmm. it? That's kind of thing. Well, that's what I'm saying. If they have representation from each of them, mm -hmm. and that means these people are having problems, be part of the solution. Well, this is if you see Darla nodding her head. Yeah. <laughs> She's I been starting to explore this when we saw that this was falling apart. She she was proactive and said, we need to jump in and try to find a way to fix this because it's not working. And I think you're a really wonderful cheerleader for Skinner Field. Mm -hmm. I think you're a great long guy. Mm -hmm. I think you're a huge advocate for kids. I think you're maybe not the best organizational board manager person. Well, I'd love to I wasn't like 
on the board. Well, I was going to say I wasn't, I, I did drop the ball during a period of time and I, I, you, but what I am is, I don't know how else to say this. I'm a Marine. Okay. I will listen and follow direction. So you tell me what to do and that's what I'll do. Okay. I want you to be out there with the kids. Well, and I do. And, and if you want the board to be re reinvented with somebody else, yes. You want to see what? I want you to be out there with the kids. I want you to take care of the field and I want you to give the book to somebody else. The book. The book yeah. of all the nonsensical foolishness. And I have no with. problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying what you're good at. Well, and, and that is, and that is fine. And I have already said, I went to the parks and rec meeting and I said, friends of Skinner is going to exist regardless of whether we have a lease with the city or not. Mm -hmm. And we're still going to continue to do what we can, you know, for the park. Okay. We, this might not be at least with the city, with the city, and we may not be opening and closing it. What what I am, and I'm not great at going out and asking for money, and maybe another organization is, but I can tell you, I've raised tens of thousands of dollars in volunteer man hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and I'm going to continue to do that because I don't need to be in charge. Despite what somebody might think, I don't care about titles. I don't care about any of that kind of thing. But what I do care about is making sure that it get, that gets done right, okay? Um, having, a so do having a succession plan in place. I mean, we spent two years going to Parks and Rec back then, um, uh, 10 years ago, different Parks and Rec, different organization, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, Parks and Rec back then, we went to the football board. CASA drew up plans uh, uh, to demolish the track, actually, and make it just a, a, a soccer field. And we told them no. And you absolutely told them no, because it could not be a situation where one sport monopolized the use of the field, which is why Friends of Skinner was born to begin with. And yes, we, originally, we did have representation, not from CASA, because they were bitter, because they didn't get it. Um, and it took me eight years to get them back. And I finally got them back. And now this has happened. But it, it, so our revenue, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, they're using the field now. That's all that matters. Where's it going with that? Oh, um, I'd like to see more of a succession plan in place of, okay, what's next? And I'll cooperate with it fully. I'm not going to stop mowing the yard. I'm not going to stop making sure it's ready on game days. I'm not going to stop that. I'm not, I'm not bitter. You think, I would love to do all the operational stuff and have somebody else handle the accounting. I would love it, but there's no plan for that. Well, you know what I mean? There, there's a plan to talk to people we, we about it. You couldn't make a plan while you have contract. <laughs> well, I under, I understand that, but we, but we don't even have, I mean, you can absolutely, in my opinion, I'm asking, I'm not telling, um, find out who's even willing to do it, whether it fits the scope of what you guys want and then serve the 60 day notice. We've got a 60 day notice that would expire with one month left in the football season and three weeks left in, in, in the, in the, um, if, if it were issued tonight, um, and there would be one month left of football season after two months have already went by. And of course we're to give you an idea football, so, cut me a check for the cut, so cut a check. 90, would a 90 day make what, your what, life easier? And what I explained to uh, the city manager, what I think makes the most sense for you and for anybody who's going to take this over let the seasons play out. Let us winterize it in November, which would be in a, you know, we winterize it in November. There's no bills except for your standard meter bills, your standard meter electric bills. Then we've got November, December. We don't unwinterize that thing. Now CASA does a spring season. We used to not unwinterize it to almost June. It doesn't get unwinterized again until um, the beginning of March when CASA needs it. So you've got four months of Dead time, no bills, no expenses to, to figure out who's going to do what, to get new leases in place. Nobody's using it. Nobody has to go out there and open the field. Nobody has to go out and do anything during those four months. Nothing is done other than checking on the place. And we get calls that kids are messing around, that kind of stuff. But no events after the end of October. So that's what makes sense to me. And I will support Anything that's that's good for, I mean, not that you need my support, but uh, I'm not going anywhere. If they need man hours, they need they need help with anything at all. I'm, I, I, like I said, I'd be a hypocrite if I walked away because I wasn't in charge. I don't care. Okay, city manager, you have this on here as a discussion item for us. Are you looking for direction? Are you well, looking? I mean, just like the library contract, you know, it, the, the the clock is ticking. I mean, I guess that's what I want to start. I I feel. I can't really move forward if if we don't give notice that at some point the lease is going to be terminated so then we can move on and figure out like 
currently Friends of Skinner Field has subleases with all these teams. Maybe the new board can have a sublease with you personally or your company or wh whoever, you know what I'm saying, that does the field right. maintenance. So whatever. what I'm asking is, what are you looking for from the board for direction? Do you want a vote from us tonight? Do you want us to tell you that we support this idea of creating a, a yes. new board? Do you like, do you want to vote? I, I'm not sure what you're looking for. I can do a straw poll. Well, I think until we give notice that a termination of the existing lease is coming, I can't move forward. Okay, so you would like a straw poll on if that's something we're looking to do? You would like a vote on if that's something we're looking to do? Um, you want to vote? I would like a vote. Okay, that's, I mean, that's, it's just as a discussion item, right. so I was not sure. I'm not sure exactly what kind of motion we're looking for. So Is that's what I'm trying something? to clarify. The way I see it. And I'm not opposed to it. Okay. I understand the complications with doing it. I understand the complications of getting volunteers to hold seats and put in the hours that are necessary to put in. I could see the vote to do it based on the end of the, the term of period or at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. right. With them being considered as a continued on with that in a new agreement amongst if there's any other groups that want to come in, but they would have to come back with the plan. We have this number of board people, we've made the offers out, we have these organizations as, as a group, and uh, preferably, if possible, get a officer uh, in a voting position from each of those groups and make it a group type thing with CASA, with uh, football, with cheer, and getting them involved and making sure they're there to help, especially with their sport, mm -hmm. being there and involved with getting it done, making sure you have a treasurer, make sure you have a secretary, if you have a president, you have a vice president. So you've got a series in there uh, with the seven person board. You can cover all of those positions and two at large. That's a wonderful idea. That was the way, that's the way I would see it. And in all honesty, it was pretty much the way it was set up to begin with. Mm -hmm. But when there was troubling times and you could get bickering going, all of a sudden you're getting people to drop off and you couldn't get other people to volunteer. Mm -hmm. You're going to get that with any group. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a challenge for Sean and the people that are there, as well as whoever else is going to want to come in and try to run this, to be able to put together what we have on paper and make sure you have those officers and in, in the process that similar to what we have to go through here to vote on anything to get it done. Mm -hmm. The documentation, the paperwork, it would not hurt to at a minimum turn in the uh, mm -hmm. financials and minutes mm -hmm. to the city manager each month. And I would kind recommend of required. It. <laughs> well and we're well and, and that's another thing. Originally we were set up um, to either do monthly or quarterly uh, 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 meetings. And then it got to the point, if you remember, we'd have monthly meetings. There was really nothing to discuss. We didn't have any, we didn't have monies. We would budget to pay the bills and that's kind of what it was. So then we went to quarterly meetings and then those fell off to where I had asked the city manager at the time. And I, I, I wish he was here because I don't like have, talking about conversations with somebody that's not here um, and said that we basically meet officially once a year as an annual meeting, set up the budget to pay. And then we meet when things come up like a pipe breaks. Well, we got to meet and say, this is what it costs. And this is like, uh, and we need to approve that amount. And do we have it? So we would meet as a reactionary thing that was pointed out quite sternly that that ain't happening. Um, and, and that that's, that's fixed. I mean, we are at quarterly meetings now. Okay. Um, and, and well, assuming we even have any more quarters to, to meet. But that being said, 
So I would Casa was never on. To, I would invite you to conclude your statement. Okay, Casa was Casa was never on the um, uh, the board in the past because they just started using it last year. So I'd like to say that's why they didn't have representation in years past. And Jerry can tell you this: we would have applicant, and and we do have a football uh, board member on the board currently, Missy Fallon. Um, she's on the football board as well. So we do have football representation. The problem we'd have when we would advertise for applicants would be we'd have four four or five football people that would want to be on the board. The problem with having, uh, you know, it, it, we want all the help we can get, but if you got four voting members on a seven person board that are all football people, what do you think happens to everybody else? They don't get a fair shake. Okay. Um, so we did try to limit that and that, that cut down on the recruiting. So that's it. So, so yes. So I'm willing to do whatever, um, you know, city council wants. I've been a servant to you guys on this field for, for eight years. Uh, what I don't want is to be stuck holding the bag as far as we are financially responsible for the water bills, for the electric bills, for all those kinds of things. You terminate the lease at the end, who's paying that in 60 days. Okay. Uh, our insurance is in place for the next year. We're still liable for the place Un unless you want to terminate it mid season, but then who's picking it up? I, I want this to be seamless. If that's what you want to transition, I'd rather you didn't, but if that's what you decide, I'm going to go along and follow orders, but I'd like it to, I, I think having it expire um, in the off season just makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. If you're going to vote to do it at all, I would ask that you not, but if you're going to do it, having it expire during game season for both CASA and football with four weeks left, doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't think because you'd already have to have something in place with insurances, with succession plans, with it have to be there because you've got four more weeks of games. So Can we wait to make a vote next month. We can. Discuss, I think she... it was discussion tonight. Anyway. Yes. Yes. And we can kind of wrap around it and you can come back. Give and, us some ideas of a plan. Well, I and I was going to say what I would like to hear from Darla is maybe a date that we should have this end so that if you are trying to. I, cause I appreciate this idea that you can't go to the folks at NKCE and say, here, I need you to come up with the structure to take this over if that's not what's happening. And so, and I also appreciate what you're saying about the idea of maybe it's November 1st. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything magical about 60 days. Um, you know, so Just an option in the lease, 30 right. days or 60 days. Right. Right. I would, I'm, I'm assuming we can give you more than 60 days. You can then, vote to expire it. I mean, as far, well, sorry, I don't know about your procedures, yeah. but when it comes to a lease, you can, you can set a termination or an early expiration date. I know that just from. Well, it depends on what the lease is. Right. <laughs> as we know with the library, we have yes. six right. months. Well, and I'm not would, fighting you guys on this. I, right. I, and I want to make sure and, that you guys understand I work for you. Well, and, and you, I'm going to do what you tell us. me to do. You, and you I just volunteer want... for the community. And right. I want you to know that we greatly appreciate your service. Right. And we think it's wonderful. We also think that you are trying to run around spinning plates in a way that is not beneficial for you and is not keeping the plates in the air. And as, as Mayor Pro Tem said, we want you to do what you're good at. And this piece of it is not what you're good at friend and i'm not saying you can't get good at it mm -hmm. but it's not what you've been good at and so what we should do is find somebody who's good at it your greatest strengths are on the field with the kids yeah that's where we want you yeah i know it's not so much i you can't do a job it was when he was trying to do all of them i agree yeah i agree and, I understand. and that's what exactly what molly is saying yeah. it has to be shared and when you were short on people it wasn't shared, John, and you know that as well as I. And so we have it's it's our responsibility to try to make sure that it is shared. As right. a historical point, um, when Skinner, when Friends of Skinner Field took this over, uh, the city was not sure how we were going to pay the approximate five thousand dollars a year <laughs> to maintain the field. So if they have maintained it for eight years, they have saved the city forty thousand dollars. So I would advocate that perhaps um, even if we were to somehow incorporate some, some structure, some infrastructure to support this, um, that, that if we were able to stay under $5,000 a year in cost, we're still at savings and we're still serving the community. And 
Um, maybe I, I think our current lease doesn't fit anything. Yeah, I, I don't agree. need your whole financial statement. Poor Darla is over there just cringing at me saying yeah. this. I don't, I don't care. As long as the lights are on, the things are paid, the insurance, the blah, 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 blah. I don't care. But we legally need but, the but financial we legally I would just like to point out that that was my understanding, which is why you got the really piss poor. Yeah, legally. That you got. I thought it was just supposed to be a summary. She she literally just like laughed at it. And I'm like, I thought that's all I was supposed to give you. But I'm legally, sorry. legally, when the auditors come through, and if you remember, we had a different finance director. True, we were doing a little fast and loose, a little bit. Little bit. And legally, <laughs> when the auditor comes through and says, because this is city property, mm -hmm. right? And what is it that's happening there? We have to have documentation of that. We we need a better, even we, we, we need a we need a better definition, a better understanding at least. I don't think anyone's interested in kicking you guys out. Despite the colorful things that I explained to you, about it. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I don't hold you. Get them to shut it off. And um, yeah, it's not. I'm at every pro game now, making do playing right. policing that. But. Which again is not your it's job. No, I enjoy that part of it. I don't mind being at the games and 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 do it's football. Yeah, well, I don't mind being. Believe there. it or not, that is some of the hardest times to get people to volunteer to be there when something's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Police yeah. If you have a couple volunteers, uh board members out of each one of those boards this is the time to start talking to them and say hey we're under a lot of pressure to have a board mm -hmm. and you guys want to come and use this field we got to have two from each organization or whatever and let's set it up Great. and I'm, get going I'm, i gotta tell you i am supportive of we need to dissolve this and start back over well yeah we would yeah. start over but that would be a way to recruit people to, to the board at least because it's terrible and no one understands it except right Darla. right and um <laughs> and she cringes when she gets out yes yes so i feel like it's it's generally terrible um the idea the inspiration the heart of friends of skinnerfield i want to keep that going mm -hmm. i want to support you somehow in a way that makes sense so that you can do what you are spectacular at mm -hmm. Because you are absolutely spectacular to me. And, and to have your heart supporting Skinnerfield for eight years at a savings to the city of 40000 probably more dollars, and in a way that has improved, not just maintained, which is all the city was talking about, but improved the field, mm -hmm. has been a great service to our community. We just need to find how we can support you. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, I want to fix the issues too. Oh yeah, um, we're gonna we're gonna need a whole different yeah. structure. Yeah, we don't. It doesn't know mean we hate you. No, well, that's nice. <laughs> I'm just saying, you like, probably weren't even thinking that. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. And 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 I didn't want you to come in here. Your, your yeah. numbers. Yeah, and I didn't want you to think that I that that <laughs> I'm not. I understand that I work for you. Okay. So you work gonna, for the like I said, I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do what you guys say to do. And if you find a better solution, if there's progress that we can make, I'm going to support it hundred percent. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to throw a little temper tantrum about it. I, I, I work for free anyway. You just tell me where to, where to do it. So as an FYI for anybody concerned, I would be supportive of a dissolution of the lease after winterization and then we kind of so, figure out how we work together same after kind that. of thing no right. maybe november 1st i mean i would Realist be willing for you to talk to darla and say like this would be a good time frame right and and the the, the thing with the lease with the language in it it only becomes a problem with the 30 and the 60 days if i fight it i'm not fighting it I, I, we can dissolve it whenever you say i'm following your orders so okay. um realistically speaking the october bills come out uh, well, in, at the end of November, right? Uh, uh, somewhere about, but we, yeah. So after it's winterized and all the bills are paid and all that stuff's done is what makes sense. And pick a date. You don't have to pick it this second, but pick a date so you can give it to Darla. Okay. Well, the, and I want to make sure that we also have the authority to continue, because to, to continue, we've only got one sublease 
outstanding that's not been fully executed and that is with cedar youth football they actually cut a check for the season because we have there are right there are number one contributor but they're also our number one expense because right. they turn on coolers two weeks ago and they don't turn them off again until november um and then water and their turnout and right. whatever so that being said they wrote the check and then they called me because of course this was on the agenda and somebody saw it and they were like oh well wait hold on to it so we held on to it we're not we didn't we didn't whatever and well, the president of the board is uh, an assistant uh, Kent County prosecutor. I do exactly what she tells me to do regardless, <laughs> even if she wasn't, but you know, but that being said, so yeah, I just held on to it because I wanted to make sure I had the authority to enter into a sub. So again, program. figure out what an appropriate date is okay. so that we can then move forward on how to structure the new without harming. We certainly are not kicking football players off the football field. Well, no. And, and, and to be clear, we wouldn't do that anyway. They're, they're Flag started two weeks ago. They're still playing, um, but eventually, so, without yeah. without revenues, we we now have set the water bill on auto, which was um, um, done. Those bills are going to keep coming out of the account if we don't have revenues. They're going to sure. bounce eventually. So, if you involve the lease, is it with the anticipation that he would be involved in some capacity? That would be up to him. I we, mean, we do not. It would be up to all of you. To but it would be. We like aren't him. excluding him, but I would okay. love him to be. But I can't. I'm not going anywhere. You will have to drag me off the field. Now, the lease is another thing. <laughs> I'm still going to be a volunteer out there doing what I can. So we're doing this because we want to help. I mean, it's it sounds like you know you've been struggling. It's been a struggle, and I get it. You wear a bunch of hats that you may not even be used to. And you know you try to stay above. Them. Yeah, you can't wear all of them. And you just can't do it, mm -hmm. which is a lot of us want to do everything. We just can't always do that. So hope to find the help that we can make it run smoothly, and you stay right where you are. More and... fun for you. Yeah. Yeah. I just have one more comment. Sure. I would hate to wait until all of the seasons are done, and then you give the ultimatum. And then start working on an agreement. I think mm. there should be a group that would sit down and work to start creating something, uh, definitely with the city manager's input, both as uh, our current split mm. uh, position with the uh, the financial and what would be expected and what has to be reported to. I think waiting to and trying to create something that can really pull together and, and have something to work towards and have any group to understand what they're gonna to have to do, mm -hmm. even step in to take it. Uh, I think you have to do it now or not necessarily now. So definitely sooner start. than waiting for the time we say, Okay, you're done. Like a soft point. start. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a great the construct. Yes. Well, again, and the construct of the overlap, which is why if we're giving you until November to wrap up your yeah, your stuff. Season, ever, all the seasons will be over by then, and I'm not going anywhere. Darla has a lot of fair fair time, and I understand mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she could redline the things that uh, she believes both legally and just totally need to be changed. It gives you a head start with what this is there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And with what amendments may or may not have to be made on it, I just think that it could be put together so any group that thinks they want to take it over mm -hmm. is going to have to have an understanding of this is what it is. Sure. So uh, and I just, I think. And I'd be happy to walk them through the operational side, of it, come down and show them everything. What all is involved, because yeah. there's things that are involved, and unless you are involved with it, you have no idea what's going on up there. So, but I, I just think I'm not opposed to uh, the idea that the termination of this particular agreement, uh, but I believe there needs to be an agreement with a group. Mm -hmm whatever it is, and it has to be updated and correct and uh, and protected of, of both the board, the city, and those groups. So, uh, so let me see if I can summarize this so we can give the city manager some direction. Um, what I'm hearing you all saying is that you agree that the current lease is not functioning as we need it to function, mm -hmm. that we appreciate 
all of the volunteering that has happened with Mr. Kiphart. We appreciate wanting to, him to be able to continue to do that, but we want to somehow dissolve this lease and create a new lease with a new organization. And that we would like the city manager to come up with some time frame and structure for that new lease with a new organization. I'm not going to throw it all back on the city manager. Thank you with her direction. Okay, that's what I'm saying. The, the structure, she would provide the structure and- The direction, yes. Jerry, are, excuse me. Are you thinking that maybe we should have a committee, like a, a little group that works on that with her? Whatever is determined by this group, yes, there probably should be some, but not only with this board, but with parents and, and representatives of those groups. Are you willing to um, work on that? Help work on that, Jerry? That. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am, you go. Well, I am asking is you have so much knowledge. I understand a lot of this is male sports, so I know you're looking. No, I, I love football. No, I love football. No, I understand. I've, I've sat in those seats and I would be willing yeah. to, yes. Yeah, because you, you have so much knowledge. Yeah. That We'd, we'd be like not good it wouldn't be good if we didn't use you, that and you super do not want me at the having same any time, conversation at the same time, uh, okay. i think super not we're not hurt to have two board members oh yeah no i i'm not i'm yeah i i don't think it would oh, either okay. you'll help me yeah. okay yeah. whatever so, darla whatever do you board. feel like do you feel like Whatever I'm trying to get a consensus though, but I'm is this where you feel like we're heading? Because Darla was looking for some direction. Yes. Darla, do you do you feel like we've given you direction? Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I can clarify more. I want to meet with these groups that have reached out to me to see okay. what their options are. Right. right. I, yep. I mean, yes. they're like, do you do you want proposals? What do you want? I'm like, if you are not a on board with terminating the current lease. I can't entertain any proposals. Yeah, sure. So, so to to clarify, we are supportive <laughs> of terminating the lease as its current structure, giving friends of Skinnerfield, you know, a slightly longer time frame yeah. than the, you know, to get them through this okay. season, yep. and then you could start reaching out to these groups, saying, "Sure, bring us what you got. Let's meet and start brainstorming and." Right. Yeah, right. Okay, so you have direction, we're good. Yeah. Do you need a vote? Or are you good? No. All right, then we're gonna move on. Do you have- I, I have a question for direction. From, does that mean that Friends of Skinner is still authorized to enter into yeah. that sublease for the 2023 season with football? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, just for the season. We will, it's, yes. not, it's not a calendar year, yes. it ends in October. What I'm gonna say is you should get with the city manager about when would be a good time okay. to terminate this lease in the next year. And I started to say November 1st, but you know, if I can, December 15th, I can 15th. talk about, I can talk right. about libraries in great detail. Right. I knew nothing about football. November 1st. Cheer. So <laughs> no, Cheer I, and soccer and, all and that. I can't Everybody's even, done by then. no, no, my, I had a marching band kid. I had a theater kid. I have a special Olympics soccer kid, but I, I would like to see, and I, I speak for myself, but I, I think most of the board feels the same, that I would like to see this uh, Friends of Skinner Field incorporated into whatever this new entity is. I mean, yeah, the people that have the options. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's lots of, of passion and tribal knowledge and, and things you can't replace. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I, I would hope that all parties. And they- Unless you tell me I have to. Might, those, entities can join into this process once we right. get a structure. And I think that they I'm would want to sure utilize. I'm pretty sure no one you. will turn down volunteers. Mm -hmm. That's my guess. So does this make sense? Do we feel like we have direction? Do you feel like you have direction? I do. I just want, I want to make sure I have the right to do that. And good. Okay. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we appreciate your passion and your time yeah. and all of it. We really do. So, okay, moving on. White Creek flat update. Planning Commission site plan review. I feel like we've covered this pretty much. Mm -hmm. Anybody have questions about this? Just you more know? for information, like there are right. several steps that still need to occur before right. 
everything's final, but we're, we're do, moving in the right direction. Do we have to do anything on the rezoning request? Is that a Not planning tonight. commission piece? Okay. Not tonight. Not tonight. Not tonight. Fair enough. Oh, the public hearing is August 1st. Yeah. Which that's the brownfield for the, which is a piece of how we are, because our finance director is amazing, how we are getting some of the funding for the water. If you remember, we mm. spent a whole oh, lot yes. of time and yes. math and yes, mapping, okay, mathing. So that's fifteen hundred dollars average per fire call to show up. Yes, right. All right. I you just got some eyeballs from Marty. <laughs> <laughs> you were at that meeting. There was an average cost for a fire department to show up at a location, and due to some long drawn out math i determined it was about fifteen hundred dollars per call for the apartment new apartment yeah. complex <laughs> i i don't know the you're more expensive than the police the police oh, is only 500 yeah, what? Yeah. I, I'm sure your fee schedule is fabulous. We were trying to figure out a, as we got more people. I, I was Googling. How do we. Very unofficial. So how did we come up with a, how much money do we need in pass through from taxes to support the fire department and the police department to provide the services for the new people going into these apartment complexes? If a piece of that taxes is being Okay. <laughs> Being sifted through. Are we do are we doing point of order here? I think we're on the I, next thing. We are that's what I'm saying. Are we good? Yes. That's yes. on this? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. City Hall roof proposal. So our we've uh our public works foreman uh director has been seeking companies across the state to come and give us an estimate to give us a new roof, repair what we have. A roof is a nightmare. So um, so this company finally came through, came and did an inspection. Their proposal is uh, for $29,540. They will fix what needs to be fixed. Oh. Not like we're talking 70,000 for a whole new roof. Yeah. We don't need a whole new roof. Oh it's just fix. I, thought, well, I was like, that's not bad for 29 actually. Yeah, it is. yeah I think it's quite fix, reasonable. Fix what we need. And fix. it's such a hot mess of a roof. I mean, it's like different, bizarre. It's like if if somebody made a roof in Dr. Seuss land. So this so, I mean, really... was budgeted for in the 22-23 fiscal year that just closed. We didn't spend the money, so it's going to carry through to fund balance. If you approve this tonight, we can... So do you, so do you want us to vote on it? For the 23-24 fiscal year, nothing. It was in last year's so, fiscal yeah. year. So you have it as a... Balance. I think we budgeted 70000 Oh, so last year, because we, we thought it was we needed a whole new roof, but we do not. We do not. We can fix the leaks and what needs so to be. So it's fixed. already budgeted, so we don't really have to. Okay. Have to I'll bring back a budget cost. amendment from fund balance. Bring it back into okay. the budget. Okay, then you don't need us to vote on anything. Well, do you? I mean, we need to sign this proposal. Is only good for thirty days. Do it. Okay. I would yeah. make a motion to accept the city hall roof proposal as presented for an amount not to exceed thirty-two thousand dollars, because that feels round. I support. Did you pick one? Any discussion? No. Miss Atchison. Yes. Mr. Gross. Yes. Miss Hamill. Yes. Miss Nixon. Yes. Miss Powell. Yes. Ms. Race. Yes. And Mayor Conley votes yes. Fix our roof oh. so it doesn't leak. Nothing ever comes out at half price. <laughs> right. <laughs> Come on. Right. Woohoo. All right. Communications, community event calendar, the calendar. <laughs> Um, we got some more signatures on the non-conforming Lake Life Farms notice of violation, MERS annual actuary evaluation. That's on our retirement piece. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Manager report. And I should say anything else in communications. Anybody got anything in communications they want to share? No. Okay, moving on. City manager. If I can back up one step, the MERS annual actuarial. Sure. Very good document. Do you remember a couple of years ago, we were less than 80% funded? Yes. Um, as of 1231-22, we're 84% funded. Okay. So, yay, yes. we're heading in the right direction. Yeah. And are we like way ahead of most people, according to our account? Our, Not our, in her book. <laughs> well, I understand, but according to our- MERS, um, MERS requirement now, they want all communities 80%. 
Okay. So they're actually finding funding for people that are not 80% funded. Got We're it. okay. There are people that are over 100% funded. Oh, okay. Mazel tov. Yeah. Mazel tov. Must yeah. be nice. Yes. Okay. But awesome. I'm glad. And um, I'm glad we pay for our people to be retired. Mm-hmm. I got an email this happen. afternoon. Just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention. Um, Northland Drive. Um, Cedar Springs Ave that comes out to Northland Drive, that intersection is going to be completely redone. Um, Dean's Excavating was the contractor that got awarded that contract. Uh, Work on that will begin Monday, July 17th. Okay. Estimated to be completed August 12th. Oh, is that going to close? We have all that area. I'm not sure the details, but be aware that there's construction there and Northland may be closed and you might have to around somehow northland at is what? that a road commission oh, yeah. springs yeah. avenue yeah. so it's a road commission uh, project yes yeah okay. yeah i have a question a walk to get your ice cream i have a question where exactly does main street end where 18 mile is supposed to come across in a straight line or at the point of the curves bill what does our I act 51 report say do you Carla. know yeah <laughs> Actually, uh, that was just redefined. Um, of course, it was. We we're both getting paid under Act Fifty One from from that us and the Road Commission. Ours ends at the end of Eighteen Mile, and they pick up um, when we talked to them on this project. Uh, they weren't too concerned. They may cover to the south side of 18 mile. If they don't, we'll pick it up on our paving project. But uh, yeah, it is at the north end of 18, the north side of 18 mile. Okay. Okay, because I was wondering what brought up that question, uh, as long as we've got you on now, is that when they finished redoing the surface of Northland Drive, they stopped just north of there, about where 18 mile would have come straight across. I didn't know if they were determining they weren't going to pay for that because it was our responsibility. So, and that was nope, had nothing. I'm sorry, Jerry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Are you done? Okay. That's why the question came up. So, yeah, it had nothing to do with that. Um, it would, had to do with uh, we were doing some work or something was going on at the same time. They did not want to close that uh, Cedar Springs Avenue 18 mile intersection. They were using it as a detour. So, they ended there with the intention on picking it up and they're going to relocate the Cedar Springs Avenue intersection. It's going like 250 feet to the north and it just wasn't a good time to do it. So they just held on to this year to do it. Okay. Thank you. You're okay. welcome. We good on this? Two more things. Okay. I um, We posted internally the finance director position. Um, we're going to Put that out there for a week. If nobody applies internally, then we'll post it externally. So that's moving forward. And then Bill, I... I'm sure you want to be the finance director. No, no. <laughs> I'm ready to move on. <laughs> um, and then I just wanted to um Marty. applaud the fire department, Marty and his staff. Um, I actually hit the submit button for a fire grant for ten thousand dollars for gloves, um, boots, and thermal imaging camera, but his staff put the grant application together. So we wow. applied for that uh, last week. Oh. Fancy. Idea. When will we hear about that? Um, okay. I think we'll hear by August. Oh, that's, that's a pretty quick turnaround. Okay. okay, so fingers crossed, throw yeah. salt over your shoulder, whatever you do, may the grants, God, smile upon us. That's all I have. All right. Moving on then. You got a something? No. Okay. I just said Bill. <laughs> all <the rest. laughs> All right, then is that a city manager report? Anything else for us? No. All right, Department of Public Works, Bill, anything you got for us? Uh, not not much. I just mentioned it. They are moving a little bit of dirt at the new well site. They started the day. So uh, we're, awesome. we're getting closer to completion on that. And uh, uh, we're doing a lot of tree trimming and stuff around town that uh, we, we've seemed to have added uh, a little more staff and then are able to get some of the stuff done that uh, we couldn't get done before. So things are going good. Fabulous. I'm so excited to hear that. And everything is good with the new well? Yep. So far, um, all the, all the tests have come back, have come back good and we haven't hit a hiccup yet. So. Okay. So this is probably where it's going to be. 
Yes, yes, most right. definitely. Uh, we don't have very many options for the next oh, well, no. so it's okay. a good thing. Well, there was there was a point where we were not sure if it was going to yeah. have the flow rate and if it was going to come back with contaminants and each one of yeah. these boxes checked his. So all that came back good. The well actually came back of a thousand gallons a minute. Now we're hoping for 750. Uh, Eagle has to approve our gallons per minute. And that's what we'll kind of set on what we can draw. So um, we don't know what the final number is yet. And no PFAS. No, no, no PFAS. That's huge. I get asked about that probably once a week. Yep, so. we have no PFAS. It, so the, the proper term is... Uh, Non-detect? De yeah, not de not detect. Um, there's, a, there's a level that they can detect that the machines are capable of detecting. We are so far below that level, nothing showing up. So we, we have no not detected in our water. It comes up non-detect. So yes. I just feel like that's an important piece to get out there for our community. Huge, yep. Bill, does that change our uh, well head direction at all from the flow of the water that we're pulling from? It should not, Jerry. Uh, I don't have that answer yet. That'd be looked at after it's put in. But uh, we are basically in the same field as four and five. So it should be the same, should be exactly the same. And after we get it in and pump a little bit, we'll have a final answer on that. So uh, okay. this is our fourth well. Me and the same thing. one of my other occupations mm. as to knowing if it changes at all. Okay. So sure. Definitely will, Jerry. Definitely will. How many total wells will this give us? This will give us four, but uh, number th number. I got to get my numbers right here a minute. Number three well, which is our oldest well, is usually five hundred gallons a minute. Well, it is slowly failing due to age, so that's about two hundred and fifty now. This is going to take the place of that eventually, but we that's will. That's going to be like a run... backup well. Well, no, we will run it on. We will run it in, uh, alternating with all of them. You don't want a well to sit because it can get bacteria and things in it. You sure. want it to pump. But oh. uh, we will we will keep it online because it adds to our capacity, mm -hmm. which we don't we don't want to lose capacity. You know, you want to have as much as possible. So we'll run that well right to the end. Okay, I thank you. You do a wonderful job. Thank you. All right, then police department, welcome. We have a new face tonight. Thank you. I'll keep it short. <laughs> uh, I'm Ben Camming. I'm the lieutenant that's assigned to the new North substation. All right. Welcome. I appreciate it. It's good to see everybody up here. Um, I think you'll see more officer presence in Cedar Springs. We're very... Uh, is uh, the substation here? I was gonna say we're very excited like about seven cruisers on it. Oh wow! Hey, <laughs> congregates here. Yeah, yeah. I think you'll notice. We're very excited to have your yeah. new beautiful building and the public health piece of it, and that's just wonderful. If they need a place, and so I think it'll. Oh, well, that's good. If they need a place to congregate in the evening, there always seems to be interesting things happening in the parking lot between Skinner Field and Morley Park. FYI. We, we know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you happen to just be around. Yeah, I just needed a place to hang it is, out. It is a nice place to park and do things. I it hear. is. There's Wi-Fi there. <laughs> yes, yeah. this is true. We do have Wi-Fi in all of our parks, so that is true. So thank you and welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Fire Department. Marty, what you got for us? Rebecca, give me this thing. I don't know if it's even I think it's on. It is. Um... I realize the council is kind of anxious to get out of here. So would this be the time to ask you again about my aerial? There's a new <laughs> Just all smiling now. Fire truck. It's on its way. Um, yes, I, will, I will give you the answer the former city manager gave to me when I brought it up. He says there's neighboring departments that have them. I asked him, do you want to wait 20 minutes for him to get here? I didn't get a response. So <laughs> we'll go from there. Miles Sparta come over in 16 minutes on our apartment fire a couple of years ago. So. If their truck is running. If, 
Yes. Ooh, that feels they, they have, have had, an extra have had 30, problems in the that. roof budget, though. Right. So that, that way, if that okay. covers it. Sorry. I would like <laughs> to take the opportunity. And Ariel's only like what? Five million? <laughs> no, you can get one for a million and a half. Oh, can you? Okay. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the council, especially Darla and Rebecca, helping me through this full time position. Um, you guys remember I've been at this for a couple of years. <laughs> I think the numbers justify the cost. Um, it's so far it's working out great. Uh, we had a little discussion with Mr. Seeley uh, Monday afternoon. Darla come down to meet and greet. Um, his first day on the job, he asked for a sick day on Tuesday, and <laughs> he was denied. <laughs> um, again, I appreciate all the support that I've had over the years. Um, a lot of knowledge uh, from some of the guys that's been on 15, 20 plus years. Um, I learned a lot from Mr. Gross. Um, Quite a bit of it was forgotten on purpose. <laughs> However, uh, I've got a great group of guys and gals, and uh, I plan on sticking around for a little bit. We're coming up. Um, we got to spec a new engine uh, next year about this time. Um, found out with Darla that we might be a couple of dollars short. Uh, the price of engines have went up. Imagine that. I can't imagine. Um, I can't guess what I'm. Um, percentage but uh and there's um about a uh, just about a three three and a half year from the time you order it till the time you get it oh. um it helps a little bit because that gives me another year and a half to save some more money mm -hmm. i've put monies aside uh for this purchase but i found out not enough mm -hmm. i will work at uh, the budget um Next year, I'd like to get the guys a couple more dollars for what they do. And uh, I've talked to Darla about that. And she said, that's not my problem. Talk to the new finance director. <laughs> <laughs> Things at you. And we're going to let her. <laughs> I mean, said that. Um, I don't have anything unless the board has anything. Again, thank you for everything. Marty, Marty, do you intend on keeping the current county truck? Yes, um, we have the option of purchasing the county truck that we, <clears throat> lack better terminology, leased for the last 18 years. Uh, more than that, 14, 15 years now. Seems to be whatever we pay for for the truck is the first part of depreciation. So whatever the value oh, is yeah. left, they get it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we paid right around four hundred thousand for that, and we can probably get that truck for about thirty. Oh, thirty thousand. Okay. And it's we've taken care of it. We've had it serviced. We maintain it. We do everything, that pump test, DOT inspections, and everything. So it'd be a super super buy. And if the council remembers, we have bought a couple of trucks from other departments um, for a, a really really good price that we also know that's been maintained. So as the former city manager says, uh, uh, shopping our flea markets, we've done we've done all right. And yeah. again, I appreciate the support, everything that I've got from the council and staff. I don't want to leave anybody out. <laughs> Marty, how's about our antique fire? <laughs> <laughs> it was coming. Any updates? I don't think uh, I can see her anymore. lips move, but I can't hear her. <laughs> you wish. Um, my not an excuse. My wife has had uh, some doctor's appointments. She just had carpal tunnel surgery, mm -hmm. so I've been uh, an Uber driver for the last couple of weeks. Uh, right. Next week, I'm going to take some time, and I am going to talk to the individual. I'm going to take a pickup and a trailer with me. And if it isn't satisfactory, the stuff's getting loaded down and bringing it back to the station, and we will find another source. I have a possible uh, volunteer to do that, so we could talk about that in the future. Well, I've talked to the individual 
and offered to pay an individual to mm -hmm. finish it, mm -hmm. dedicate himself to that mm -hmm. truck until it's done, and I would pay him. Sure. I think the council's offered to put We've some got money some towards it. left mm -hmm. in our fundraiser, plus the council uh, last few years has, has generously offered uh, monies to mm -hmm. complete that project. Do you have anybody in mind to uh, finish it? If I, I can't necessary. give you names right now, but mm -hmm. I have two or three different people that uh, have told me, let me know. I, I know somebody that will do that. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you know who this volunteer is, too. It'd be great, yes. Okay, thank you. Anything else? <laughs> do I hear a yes on the aerial? <laughs> Absolutely, Marty. There's one. As soon as, as, soon as she gets a steam powered fire truck. That's a start. Thank you. Madam Clerk. It's been a very busy month. Mm -hmm. You guys can probably see that from my, my report. That is a snapshot of the things that I do in a month. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the bare bones of what it was completed in the summer. I have to tell you that I have had people from Cannon Township, from Algoma Township, and from Solon Township all come to me and tell me what a phenomenal job our clerk does. They have come looking for information on getting things posted, on how do they find minutes, on where do they get things, how can they, and they just cannot even, I even had one who said, can we hire her? No. <laughs> and I said, well, I think the one in your particular location is elected. So unless you're going to offer her a house to move, I think that's- I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> just put it out there. <laughs> option. <laughs> so, no, he was a realtor. Yeah, but I, I just- done with her comments. I just, <laughs> I just <laughs> feel like you should know. And I, I have these people who come and ask me, and I say, please go talk to our clerk about our, and they do. And then they come back and they tell me, your clerk is so put together. She is so intelligent and so friendly and so organized and they just rave. So you should know that that is the face that you are putting out there for our community and representing us in that capacity. Thank you. Uh, the only thing I would add is that ever, all of the other staff members, Darla, Carrie, DPW, they've all been really working their tails off. Of course. Just wanted to give some kudos to them as well, because it really takes everybody to make it happen. Especially down a finance director or down a city manager or whatever that, whatever, whatever configuration you, you call this. Yeah. So, Other than that. And the fact that they're looking at changing possibly uh, for Michigan to become one of the first ones for the vote next year is for presidential candidates and so forth. They're looking at moving it to February. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's running for office next year will have to file by when? Um, the filing deadline will change for those candidates. However, city council candidate deadlines will not change. Is that what you were asking, Jerry? Yes. Okay, city council deadlines will not change. So we would not have to be any sooner I say we as a board. As a board. Speaking personally. <laughs> okay. Those yeah. deadlines would not change for city council. Because those are set by our charter, correct? And other elections. Yes. But okay. because the election happens in November, your deadline will not change unless the November general changes. And I don't foresee that happening. Because it's a primary that. Yeah, the primary is really the deadline for the August primary. So you may have to have another one depending on the numbers of people running. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You need another, another one to go through. Right? I, from my understanding, it, that it's it's not going to be moved on, but things can change in a half a second. Yeah. There's support for it one day, and then there's not the next. So, okay. um, yeah, at this point in time, filing candidates for well, you. We're getting a, <laughs> <laughs> we might be getting a butterfly. <laughs> um, if for some reason they end up do they move it, then we would have to readdress it. But I don't believe it's going to be happening. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Finance director, <laughs> you're back up. Yep. Um, NKCE audit, since I am the treasurer on that board and do the books for all of them, all that information is here at City Hall. That will happen uh, Wednesday, July 19th. Hopefully they can get that done in one day. If not, they'll be back on the 20th. And then the city audit has been scheduled for the last week of August. Okay. So, we'll be working on that stuff. 
awesome in your copious spare time. And then code enforcement, building inspection, board and commission meetings. Anybody have anything? Council comments. I will start with Ms. Powell. Thank you, everybody, for your hard work. It's just a, we do have an amazing staff. It's just wonderful. Um, red flannels uh, starting up pretty good and getting organized. I want to meet again with uh, you whenever there's time. And uh, hopefully the road will be finished. And uh, they're getting kind of nervous about it. But I said, don't you worry. Darla's in charge. <laughs> but otherwise, uh, thank you, everybody. And good night. Yeah, thanks a lot for the staff. I mean, these to be down one and still be as wonderful as they are. You know, it's great. Um, also, um, look forward to um, getting your in your seat and uh, hopefully getting somebody for the one you filled so wonderfully. <laughs> and I'm sure you're going to do the same with this one. You've already done so much. So it's great. Thanks. Gary? Continue to come down the line if you want. I, well, I can. Well, I just, it happens. So, uh, I think it was a pretty good meeting tonight. There was a lot of discussion on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some things that need to be addressed and, and straightened out. I think they all can be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think there's a lot of things to happen yet in the year to come. Mm -hmm. So we'll get there. That's it. Okay, Ms. Hamill. Um, I just want to give a shout out to our two citizens who made it through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> Seriously. Uh, this is part of the reason why people don't know what's going on. Yes. So spread the word, bring your friends. Um, Tune in on YouTube. Coming. Yeah. I'll okay. pass your turn. Oh, sure. yeah. It was a good meeting. Yay. I hope that we get something settled and figured out with the library stuff. That's all. The library board meeting is Monday the 24th, mm -hmm. if you're available. Okay. Rose and I what time have a standing it? date. Yes. We have again. Monday the 24th, 7 o'clock at the library. Okay. Hmm. Um, congratulations. Congratulations. Is that what we're doing? Okay. And uh, welcome. I think that's it. It's just been a long night. So. It has. Yes. Ms. Nixon? Well, I, um, I, I continue to be grateful for the spirit of volunteerism that is prevalent in Cedar Springs and, and especially here. And, um, and you know, for our, for our staff who, you know, always, always does an amazing job. And we always say thank you to our volunteers and our staff, um, but they never cease to rise to the occasion. And that is that is special and unique about this community. And I, I just cannot express how grateful I am for that. So thank you. And I'm just gonna say thank you to this board. You all, put in some serious due diligence in this last few weeks between coming up with what we need for Darla's contract with reading letters that I email you from attorneys 24 hours before a meeting, with hearing from Lakeland directors, with taking phone calls on budget overrides on Main Street because we have to have this in in 24 hours. And you nobody ever says don't bother me i can't do this it's too much i you just say yes yes and that's phenomenal it is phenomenal that you all put in this kind of work so i want you to say i want you to know that i see that so and thank you with that we're joining. Hey, ladies.